six, and I, I, you know, I just go, I get tired. You want me to take this goddamn mask? Yes, or? please. Yes, please. Yes, 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 definitely. Well, do you mind if I uh, hang it from my? Uh, well, no, mind. We won't get close. That's all. <laughs> I promise my daughter I keep. My daughter's my boss now. She visits you. What? She she visits you in your house here. Uh, yes, yeah, she buys my food for me. Uh -huh. She does my shopping. Does she live close now? No, she lives an hour and a half away. Oh, wow. And oh. she's the one responsible for me getting uh, getting my shot. You could put that in the thing. I'll tell you the truth. Uh, nothing about having a son, I'm sorry. I love my son to death. But I'll tell you the truth, having a daughter is good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I have a daughter, you see. And I two know. sons, and look who, who's with me. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, a, a girl's so are terrific. Have the same yeah. situation. I'm sorry to say that, but uh, you know, <laughs> they were actually. <laughs> if you if if you took my art history class, it was amazing. The girls did so much better than the boys. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I mean, I'm, I'm, well, what can you do? No, oh, don't print that. I don't want my son to hear. <laughs> He, my son has has he has uh, three children too. Boys? No, he has two boys and one. I have one granddaughter, one granddaughter, but she's like a genius. I'll show you her drawing and son that she did at eight years old. She does drawings of uh, of animals. She likes animals a lot. Do, do your your grandchildren paint? Because I know that you uh, name uh, them. All, um, by their well, but actually, both my children are artists. French, you know, my daughter became a photographer. I couldn't help that. <laughs> you know, sorry, sorry. She was low student and she loved low. In fact, Lou came to uh, her wedding. And, um, uh, but she has two boys. and But she's now, she's become a children's book illustrator. She does, she, she does a lot, but she has two children to take care of, you know. It's a big, uh, you know. And my son-in-law is a historian. He became a historian, though he makes money as a computer expert. But his real love is in doing history. Mm -hmm. And my son is a professional tattoo artist, you know. He li but he lives very far away. He lives up in the, uh, up uh, just 20, uh, 20 minutes, really, from the Canadian border. Does he have a in studio? In New York State, what? Does he have a studio? Well, and what he does is that he works in a shop in Plattsburgh. That's where he makes a living at, as a tattoo artist. And I'll tell you the truth, it's quite incredible. You've got to understand this. I, I wouldn't have a tattoo that's for all of the world. First of all, I don't even like my blood taken with a needle, much less have this goddamn bee sting on you. You have to, if you're, a if you're being tattooed, you have to be convinced <laughs> somehow or other that it's not, it's not going to be painful. It's like I'm a constant bee sting on you. It's unbelievable. But Josh has got tattoos now all over his body. But he's a and he makes enough money to support three children. And um, uh, my son d d divorced his first wife, but he's got another wife now, and a nicer one, I must say. And so. Uh, uh, well, he's a boy, he, you know, he takes care, he's a very good father. Well, my daughter's a very good mother, so that's what counts. Well, you're a good father. So the family is very important. Yes, you. family is very, and I love painting families. I love, so maybe you and your daughter, and uh, you can come over uh, later on, because I, I have, uh, I don't go places, and I used to go places to paint. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm really too old to, to drag my paints into my car and... Yeah, you used to have a van. I used to have a van, but that, they fit into my car, the paintings, but uh, I can't do... I Even like, I'll show you the painting of the mayor. When I painted him, I had to go to City Hall, you know, to paint him, but I, I, I can't do that now. So you don't go to places anymore? How, no. how do you paint people in the environment then? No, they come here. But they and and the I make up the environment now. From the photographs? No, from my, I, was, I just make up colors in it. Oh. 
I, I don't use... So you're becoming a surrealist? Uh, well, not exactly. You'll see the paintings inside were all recently done. This one was done directly from... This pa these two paintings were done with four colors only. And, uh, they, and my daughter had to pose for me. <laughs> who, who is in the, in the reflection? Or who, who is in the reflection in this painting? Oh, in the, in the uh, James Dean. Oh, James Dean, okay. James, there's, a big the po there's, there's a big poster of him that she put up against her oh, door. Uh, the door. Because my my uh, my in laws, um, my in when my my uh, uh, when my in laws were very old, they were in their nineties, and my brother in law had died unfortunately. So we took our in laws here. And they stayed with us for about, I think, eight months before, you know, they were almost a hundred. And, but my daughter then gave up her bedroom to her grandmother and grandfather. And she ended up taking the room downstairs. And then she made it her own. <laughs> and actually, originally when I did this painting, I go, yeah, well, who cares about James Dean? But I've done all these paintings now of, of, ta of of the graffiti artists of Trenton, you know, there, uh, and uh, I think, my God, this relates to my graffiti paintings, and I really like these paintings a lot. We went to your show in Robert Wood Johnson Hospital, and you had a yellow sky, so that's, that's like... Yeah, then I got from, then I got actually, to tell you the truth, from, uh, uh, from uh, what do you call it again? From painting the the uh, graffiti artist, no, the gra graffiti artist, not Van Gogh. The graffiti because they use such brilliant color. I figure you can't make a blue sky, but it looks stupid. But you were always realist painter, and you only used for colors, right? Yeah, you saw. But now, uh, uh, Margaret O'Reilly, the. Uh, Oh, who's the, um, she She was the curator of fine arts at the State Museum, but now she's she's become the director of it. She suggested that I use black. Yeah, I never used black. So I added black to my paintings. So I now use fine, and I like it better, actually. The, the, anything he, like my woodcuts in this painting are not painted with black. You know, they're black and white woodcuts. If you mix the dark red with the dark blue, you got a, basically an extremely purple. dark purple that looks like black. And you, you know, the colors really harmonize very easily. But if we go inside too, which I would like because I'd like to show some of my, my more recent paintings. Mm -hmm. um, I like, I just finished a painting of my niece with her family and in that painting which is rather interesting which i like now took me a while to finish it i had painted my niece five years ago with her husband and her stepson and she lived actually in lambertville but then nicole ended up moving away before i finished the painting that's the thing is that, you know, when you're painting on site, you have to be careful with young people. So she moved to Atlanta, so I could, so I, I put that painting aside. And then I decided, and, and then she had a daughter, and you'll see it, and, and she and her husband had a child, and uh, the child's name is Georgia, where they live now. And uh, she's terrific, this little girl. So I ended up actually, well, her I had to pay for a photograph because she wasn't around. And then I put photographs of the wedding and stuff in the painting. But I made everything up and I took elements of my house and I put it in the painting. Listen, it's a painting, it's not reality, let's face it. You could do anything you please. And I, I, I do believe is it okay if I say these things, I think? Of course, but you're breaking your own rules because you said that you never paint from photographs. Well, I, if I paint a photograph... Oh, you paint the photograph in the, the painting, right? In the painting, I can paint from photographs. Okay, so but you, I would, you but found it, a way but, to but, explain it, I understand. Yeah, in other <laughs> words, if there's a... If there's, like, I'm planning, actually, uh, it's interesting because I'm planning to do a big paint, a self-portrait of myself 
and I'm good. I want to put, you know, my uh, my wife in it, and my children and my grandchildren in it, and 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 stuff. But I, the, the, first of all, my wife can't post, so I have photographs of my wife in the other room that I'm just going to copy. And then I have photographs of my daughter with her husband and my son with his present wife. And then I have a photograph that um, they gave me of all my grandchildren together. And I, I'm going to put a photograph actually of my uh, niece and my sister in it because that's my family. So it's going to be a group photograph. Uh, it'll, be a gr it'll be like I'll be standing. I'll be a big figure, but around me will be all these People. photographs of, of, I'll paint the photographs in. But if it's a photograph, I don't mind painting it, because then it's obvious when you do it, when you look at the painting that you're seeing a photograph. But um, if it's, if it's the, like when I, if I paint, when I paint you and your uh, daughter and your son, maybe, he was my student too, I believe. Chris, right. Chris, yeah. If, if you come and pose for me here, uh, you I want to you you I would have to paint from life, because but first of all you're three dimensional people alive, <laughs> and and without your goddamn mask stuff, <laughs> I'm so sick of this mask stuff, so that uh, you know, it's. Uh, 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 now what was I saying? My you, you you still paint from the. From life, from yeah. Life yeah, you would have to you. sit in my house, and then I, you know, and I would want you to bring a camera with me, to you, to show that you're a photographer. In fact, I'm my photographer. I mean, the guy who photographs my paintings. His name is, you know, Ron Eckert. He yeah, I saw him on your photo on our painting. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a painting of him, but he's coming here, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm gonna put it with him. I'm going to put photographs of his painting. You know my painting of Lou. You know Lou, Lou Draper. Draper you it's know, in the Lou. Whitney Museum, right? Yeah, the the Whitney. Uh, you, well, he's a he had a, just had a show in the Whitney actually, but my painting of him is in the Whitney. Mm -hmm. They own that painting. But you, you did two at least. Two, yes, and that one is actually one of my, excuse me, one of my best. Painting. I painted several photographers. I also mm -hmm. did a painting of Eric Quinsman. Do you remember him? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I painted him. I painted Michael Dalton. I painted all the teachers in school. <laughs> it's funny. I always made fun of photography. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you know, but Lou didn't mind it, but I'll tell you who minded it. Boxdale. Oh, do you want a chair, sweetheart? Oh, that's right. what? Because what? you can get a chair from me. I can no, get okay. you a chair. Okay, don't worry can, about I, me. can I ask you a politically incorrect question? Yeah, sure. Why do you think that photography is not an art? What? Why do you think that the photography is not an art? Oh, that's nonsense. Of course it's an art. You know, a lot of the things I said when I was younger, to tell you the truth, a lot of bullshit I'm beginning to say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love it. You know, I mean, actually, most of the things my teachers told me are just, I were just stupid. It had nothing to do with me, because, you know, I, I studied with all abstract painters. And when I was at Cooper Union, they were abstract expressionists at that time. That was, you weren't born. That was in the 1950s. And uh, um, I had a teacher, you know, who told me, he said, oh, you, you know, you, what do you mean you want to paint, uh, uh, you know, you want to, I said I wanted to paint the figure. He said, you're going to try to get a likeness. And, you know, and uh, I, I thought to myself, what's wrong with that? You know, one of my teachers even told me if you paint somebody, it shouldn't look like them. It should look like a generic person. That's nonsense. That's just a stupid idea that, that they used to have. So in his class, um, to be honest, because I went to Cooper Union, which was a free school, if I failed the course, I'd be thrown out of school, so I figured I'll paint still lifes instead. But, uh, uh, you know, it's just, photography is an art, 
And also, I used to tell my students um, that when you're doing a painting, you should work on the whole painting at the same time. That's not true. Because like, even with these two paintings, you think my daughter was going to stand there for the entire time I painted the background? You know, she's a gutsy young lady. Uh, girls are now, you know, stand up for themselves. They're not going to say crap. So, I mean, not just her, but the other people. I paint the person first, and then I paint the background. Right. right. What does it matter with that? You know, a lot of the stuff that young people are taught in school is nonsense. And a lot of the stuff that your teachers told you, I mean, nothing, it's good. You, you have to learn two things. I, I mean, one thing, basically. I don't think you should, you know, disrespect your teacher. But a lot of the things they tell you means nothing to you. Nothing. And you should just throw it away. Once in a while, a teacher will tell you something that just does have some meaning for you. And I'll tell you the truth. In art school, I think, because I never forced anybody, uh, you know, to paint like me. I did, you know, you, you, if you're going to be a painter, you should paint the, you, you have to do what's inside you. How many people want to really just paint figures realistically? Not that many. I haven't got one student, maybe one, who ever ended up painting. One of my best students now, who's become successful, her name is Linda Bacchese, she paints some photographs and she paints architecture. Mm -hmm. You know, so what does it really matter? You, you never told your students, you never forced them to, to copy your style. You never no, told I them never what to did. Do. You let and, them be. Uh, and there were teachers, by the way, when I went to art school, who really only liked uh, their own work in a way. Mm -hmm. And I studied with some very famous uh, teachers. I studied with uh, Joseph Albers. You know, you heard of him, he's mm -hmm. very famous. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, Every, uh, I, the the one, I, a lot of, because Albers was a famous colorist, but the one thing that I learned from Albers had nothing to do with color. I would learned nothing about color from him. The main thing I learned from him was really basically that if you're doing a figure, because he never stopped me, that's one thing I must say. He never stopped, he never stopped me from painting the figure. Um, he was German, you know, and he had a thick German accent, and he would say, Leipzig and I are having a fight. You know, in German, the G is, becomes like an SH. Leipzig and I have, you know, and he kind of liked me. So he let, he let me paint what I, what I wanted, uh, in a sense, what I wanted to paint, but everybody there was painting with dots of color. Now, he made statements that I think are so completely absurd. Um, uh, he didn't like, for some reason or other, he didn't like the German Expressionists, you know. So, uh, you know, one of, one of my friends had a, a, a reproduction in his booth of a painting by uh, uh, Max Beckman, who is, by the way, I think is probably the greatest German painter of the 20th century. And, uh, and Albus almost had a fit. He's like, you find me? You have a painting? He's a terrible painter. <laughs> you know, and it was really a lot of not. He was just, I think, to be honest, I think he was jealous of him. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I can say. And then he made a stupid statement once. He, he didn't like, you know, the painter Caravaggio? Mm -hmm. uh, Caravaggio is one of the monumental geniuses of all time. He was an influence on people like Rembrandt and Velasquez. I mean, my God. Uh, and he said Caravaggio ruined painting. Why? Because he didn't lead to uh, Albus doing a flat one color inside another color, you know. That, that's what, it, uh, I mean, Albus paintings are good. I have nothing against this painting. I'll tell you the truth, I, res I, I like abstract painting. I just don't want to do it. I never wanted to do, I never in my life did a non-objective painting. I never did an abstract expressionist painting. You know, everybody was flinging paint all over the place. I, I knew instinctually 
when I went to art school that that's, I, I didn't want to do it. I just didn't want to do it. And then when I went to Yale with Albus there, they were all painting. Most of the, the students were actually painting with just dots of color. Oh, I couldn't believe it. They were all painting like dots of color. You say and about I, yourself that you are a realist painter in and, the and I just, world. I, I, I real, that's one thing I, I, you know, I just stuck to, I, I wanted to paint the figure. You know, otherwise, why should, why the hell should I have been painting? And I'm sorry to use that term, but you know, why should I, 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 uh, uh, you know, I, I just, if, if it's not, if it's not what you want to do, this is nothing against advertising. You should go into advertising, I think, because then you have to do what the client wants you to do. You know, that's it. And of course, like in the old days, you had to paint. What a, because artists used to make their entire living actually in the, in the very old days mm -hmm. since impressionism that's not true but or since the 19th century that's not true the old the people had to paint either basically aristocrats or history paintings or, or or paintings dealing with religion that was the subject and they got paid for it right. they were commissioned to do it so you'd be out of your mind not to do it you know once in a while, I've gotten a commission to do, a, you know, a portrait. But uh, and then you had to do it. Well, then you sort of well, not entirely. I'll tell you the truth. Well, I can say this because the woman is passed. <laughs> I did, and this painting is now in a museum. I did do a painting once of a family, and the woman when I painted her. Uh, she had one color type of hair, so I, it was a, a big painting, so I paint, I'm not going to mention it here. So I put it, and then all of a sudden, she wanted me to change the painting. I wasn't going to. It would have ruined my painting. <laughs> I was going to put a different color hair in. Yeah, but a family didn't mind. They were the ones paying me, actually, and so she really didn't like the painting at all. But... Uh, you know, that's the way it happens. You got to be... Uh, uh, one of my heroes, I, I will say, is actually Thomas Aikens, whom I think is America's greatest painter. You, you've heard of him. I know, yeah, sure. and he was painting from the cello that you were painting from. That's right, yeah, see, that's right. When I was painting the, uh, uh, Eric with the cello, I painted, uh, uh, you know, I painted the cello was actually from Aiken's painting called The Cello. He was looking at the same cello as you were looking later. No, I mean, I couldn't believe it. It was unbelievable. I was painting, you know, he's, because he's one of my heroes. Uh, but a lot of people, you know, that Aiken's painted, he was basically, a, he was a portrait painter, really, um, is... Um, were uh, didn't, didn't ended up not liking their paintings, you know, because he never flattered anybody, you know. I mean, come on, you, face it. When you sometimes when you see these portraits and then you look at the person, my God, <laughs> and that's what they, you they, do. They don't they don't look like even like even somebody who I like. I remember I, I like Lyndon Johnson very much. I thought Lyndon Johnson was really. A wonderful president. I mean, I know people don't like him because of the Vietnam War, but I think he had a war on poverty. He did a lot of good things. He's a great president. But Peter Heard did a, uh, who was Andrew Wyeth's brother-in-law, I think, did a portrait of him. <laughs> and 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 Johnson said about the painting, it's the ugliest thing I ever saw. Well, it looked exactly like him. <laughs> you know, he, he's not exactly, you know, he's not Brad Pitt. He's not a handsome man, you know. He didn't look like the Kennedys, you know. He looked like what he looked like, and that's fine. People don't understand that. I like painting old people now. Uh, I've even painted myself now. Recently, there's a painting in the other room I'll show you that I just finished. I mean, I think old people look fine. I don't look bad. I think having lots of wrinkles makes your face very interesting. So, I mean, I think it's all non... People don't have to look like, like uh, you know, it's... Gets this. 
I mean, what are they supposed to look like? Movie stars all the time? The movie stars don't look like that. <laughs> you know, they're all made up. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. But there are some people who really like to do uh, uh, just pretty looking people. That's it. That's what they like. So you like wrinkles and you like mess as far as... Yeah, as and I like right? mess. That's why, you know, your buddy, that's why Lou and I got on so well. I think because Lou, uh, Lou was, a, you know, he Messing collected I remember his studio. He has his little studio. room and stuff. And, uh, you know, we did a book on Lou, you know. Yes, I know. And I, 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 I thought the world of Lou, he was a, Lou was an exceptional person. He was an extremely, a decent human being, and he actually uh, now he's become famous. You know, uh, you know the the Kabonji group, which he was part of, became. I just had a show at the at the at the Whit Day, and he had a show. I, but that that's almost all due really to his sister, who really. Um, well, it, it's a long story. She, she basically formed a foundation dealing with Lou's, Lou's work, and she, that foundation got Lou a show at the Virginia Museum, and that show then came up north. There was an exhibition of Lou's work and your works and his book at the Trenton part of Mercer County College. Yeah, at Mercer County College Several there years was. Ago. Yes, there was. Lou and I had a two-man show on. We did. It was nice. It was really so good. Who was your friend? And he was my friend. Yeah, you all my friends, all the people who I, I was the best friends with at school, uh, have died. They have died. I find this, uh, you know, Lou. You remember? Do you remember Jack Harris? Yeah. Yeah. But you immortalized them on the on your paintings. Yeah, I painted them. And remember so Jimmy, you, Jimmy Calavita. Yeah, Calavita, sure. Yeah, and, and there was a, my first chairman. I don't know if you were at school at that time. Oh shit! What did my bandage for? It's higher. It's right here. Like right here. What? It's right here. Where is it? Like right there. It's a little higher. Oh, here it is. Oh, Christ. Oh, I go to a dermatologist, you know, and they, have, a, have I covered the wound? I don't know if I want to, mm -hmm. I'll forget it, what is it? So, so, so I, I, I go to, when you get old, by the way, you got to be careful, because if you went to the beach when you were young, it's amazing. When you get old, you start getting skin cancer. So I go to a dermatologist and he scrapes me all the time and he just scrapes me, you know. <laughs> and I have to put bandages on the scrape. With all those people that you immortalize, do you believe that? Do you believe in God? Oh, yes, I do. Are you going to meet them? I'll again? tell you the truth, and this is one of the things I believe very strongly in God. So you're going to meet them again? Well, I, I know. I think. I don't want to go into it, but I had a very difficult childhood. But uh, my wife saved my life when I met my wife. That was the best thing that ever happened when I married Mary Jo. But not only that, I, uh, if you're an artist, when you're painting, all of a sudden, instinct comes in and plays so much a role in, in doing artwork, you know? It's just something goes into your head and you do it. Where the hell does he think that comes from? You know, it's stupid. It's not what you were taught necessarily. You know, there are some things that you were taught you might make use of, but a lot of it really is just instinct. And, and that I, I, I definitely feel comes from God. I mean, I'm, I feel almost compelled, even like with the painting that's in the other room. I had to make so many changes, and a lot of the changes came, actually, from the fact that, you know, I just felt the compulsion to go make the change. Who, who, who gives you that? 
I think it's stupid to believe. Um, well, a, pe a lot of people don't believe in God now. You know, it's, it's a big thing. You know, and that's okay. I mean, if you want to be an atheist, you can be. An we live in a free country. You can believe in whatever your goddamn place. You are very liberal in this respect. Yes, I'm a liberal. You let people do, think what they want to think. Yeah, you should let people. You you can't for. Well, that's the other thing, of course, about religion. Everybody's killing each other. In all religions, by the way, it doesn't matter which religion you belong to, they're all murdering one another. You know, when they have wars over what? Who's the last person who saw God? You know, you tell me who saw her face. I'm just being facetious, but it's mm -hmm. her. You know, it's kind of stupid. But, uh, but, but the belief in God, in a God, let's say, has been constant throughout human history. Mm -hmm. Ma mankind has known almost instinctually that he there is so much that you cannot control and that is nothing to do with, and there is a difference between good, bad and wrong. There is. But God doesn't show in your paintings. What? Do you have God showing in your paintings? Oh no, I don't know what it looks like. No, I don't paint him. And so, uh, and I have no desire to. Though I've done paintings uh, when my, my when my wife passed, uh, we went to because uh, uh, I'm Jewish and my wife was was brought up as a Catholic, but neither of us were practicing anything. So, but we went to a Unitarian minister to, to officiate, and and. And so I painted him then. I, went, I stopped, did two paintings of him. Mm -hmm. Then I went and I painted a rabbi. I did two paintings of him. And then I painted the uh, Catholic minister in, in the, the, the church, church of the, the, of the Sacred Heart. Yeah. And, uh, and that I think is the best one that I did. Because I used all sorts of different, I kept doing all sorts of different perspectives in it. Did you ever hear of a guy named Monsignor Toomey? No. He was a well-known uh, priest here in, in Trenton. He was uh, much loved, and he posed. Actually, he died in the, while I was not not in front of me, but well, while I was working here? on the painting. Yeah, mm -hmm. so he died. But, uh, but I was able to finish him because um, uh, one of his seniors, uh, Father Dennis, put on his robes. And then sat me for the button, but I already finished his head, mm -hmm. so I didn't mind if I, you know. Right. Uh, so that's in some instances, it's kind of funny. Once when I painted one of the uh, presidents at Mercer County Community College, he was a very big guy and a big chest, sort of in a way. I mean, it was. I made changes for him because he's, you know, he was. They were paying for it. Not a lot of money though, but and he said, "I'm tall. Man, can't you make me taller?" So I made him a little taller. But then when I, he pe he posed for the head, but then when I needed the body, I used actually a girl. Because <laughs> only girl? she had the body. <laughs> only a girl would have the rest of the body that he nice. that like that he had. he didn't know that. Well, he <laughs> that around, but still, I thought that was so funny. But uh, uh, you know. Doesn't matter. Well, you you are from Brooklyn, right? From New York City. Yeah, I was born how, in Brooklyn. How come did you end up in Trenton? Well, uh, that's a, that's an interesting question because um, in 1968, that was a very pivotal year in my life. I was getting married, and you know, before I was getting married, I'll tell you the truth. I basically thought that because I was an artist, I shouldn't work too much, <laughs> but I had to support myself. So I had part-time jobs. I had gotten actually, I was teaching part-time at Queens College. I even taught a class at Columbia and I caught an adult education center. But then I thought, listen, I'm getting a wife. I should, I should be able to support her. I, I, I mean, my wife didn't marry me because she thought I was rich. That's that's almost a, a crime to marry somebody for money. That does never work out. But uh, you know, so I made a big circle from 
from Manhattan. And I, I, I had a friend, or he wasn't a friend, I knew another teacher at Queens who said that he used to fly down to North Carolina to teach. And then he'd fly up, you know, he'd stay two days or something, and then he'd, stay, he'd come back. I thinking, well, I can do that too. So I made a big circle, and I ended up sending, um, you know, and, and then I, I found every single, you know, not just uh, a school that I, whose name I could find. And I did write to Mercer County Community College. I found its name on a list. And then, uh, by sheer luck, this, it's just luck, Sam Willock was the chairman at the time, and he had just been hired at Mercer to actually expand the art per program at Mercer County Community College, which, by the way, used to be an art school. It was, the, it was originally the, uh, uh, the school of, of arts or something, because Mercer County, Trenton, used to be the second largest center of the ceramics industry in the world. Mm -hmm. After Liverpool, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I then had to go meet these three men in a hotel, the Hotel Americana. I remember I told Mary Jo, you know, I didn't know who they were. And I brought, you know, some examples of my work. And Sam was there. And almost as soon as I got into the room, Sam said to me, you went to Cooper Union, you're going to be hired. <laughs> <laughs> because he went to Cooper Union. I mean, that was good. And then, the, and then Dr. Mm -hmm. Morello, who was another guy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, 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 I brought in some drawings I did, you know. And since I drew realistically, and the artists who were at Mercer, Though Frank Rivera could draw realistically, terrifically, uh, but he wasn't doing that. He was doing abstract painting, and so they wanted somebody who was doing abstract painting, uh, realistic painting. They wanted somebody to come, uh, you know, who, who, who could do that. And so they both. In fact, Dr. Borello eventually bought one of the drawings, and he bought several of my paintings, and I did. Uh, I did a portrait of him, in fact. He died a while ago. And Sam eventually, of course, died. But uh, that's how I got the. I never heard of Mercer County Community College. I never heard of Trenton. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, my mother actually was born in this city. I can't believe it, but she was born here. And, and one of my uncles once told me that the happiest days of his life were when he was a little boy living in Trenton. But I never, you know, I never had been to Trenton, so... Uh, uh, you bought this house? No, we didn't, no, no. We bought a house, when we first came here, we were gonna have, uh, and the only reason, when, we, when I first got the job, and they hired me, I stayed in New York. I, was, I had an apartment that, in New York on 3rd Avenue, that was just ninety dollars a month. You where were you the hell you going to get that? <laughs> if they had like rent control, and I was an artist, so they gave me a cheap. I mean, I had a wonderful landlord. You know, he gave me terrific furniture and all that. He was an antique dealer. His name was Shigeri. and so I would trap. And half the Sam lived in New York, and I don't know. Did you know Evelyn Stern? No. She used to teach it at the so school. So you were commuting every day? To every day, but then, but then when my daughter was, was about to be born, we really decided that we couldn't live in New York. I mean, I love New York, but you know, I'll tell you the truth. When people tell me that Trenton's a dangerous city, I think, really, is that what you think? When we lived in New York, I was robbed in every house I had, <laughs> every house. We had a bar against the door, you know, one of these things sticking up the door. We had bars on the window. I mean, it was unbelievable. And some guy actually, uh, uh, I remember, chased me into my house. I ran upstairs. And uh, I hope I can say this, but I'll, and he yelled up at me. I just told this to my friend Dan Over. He says, "You come down here, you goddamn fucking Irish bastard!" You know, I think, you know, he was high on drugs. I mean, all these people were, 
and everybody was, you know, so, you know, when you come to Trenton, it, you know, and then there's a park. We lived on Parkside Avenue near, near Cadwalder Park. Mm -hmm. It was like, I couldn't believe it. it was like living a, a block away from Central Park in New York. In fact, the same man who designed Central Park, Frederick Law Olmsted, designed Cadwalder Park. And so, uh, by the way, I'll tell you this. I didn't realize when I started teaching that I would actually love it. Because I do think that, you know, I, that's, and in the 1960s, art departments were all expanding in New York. So it was easy to get part-time jobs. And they were expanding, obviously, here too. That, that was in the 1960s. I never realized how much I really loved teaching. I used to have a high going into school. I only liked, by the way, I'll be honest with you, the students. I wasn't so crazy about the administrations <laughs> all the time because pe you know people were often put in charge who had no idea about what an, uh, an artist or anything. You know they were they often were. Sam was wonderful. Sam was a, a wonderful chairman, and he was a very he was a very decent person. But we so we moved to we moved to Parkside Avenue, but we had a small house, you know, one of these townhouses, I guess they're called, mm -hmm. that was like two floors. But then when Joshua, my son, was being born, it was too small for for two children, and also the house was so small. When I was painting there, I I I could I, I you know I couldn't see my paintings from a distance. I had some sort of deck in the back of my house that I was using as a studio, but somebody, or somebody was going to change it into a studio. And in all these paintings that I couldn't finish. But then uh, we found this house. And I'll tell you the truth, you know how much this house cost? But we bought it, we bought it in 1970. It was only $29,000. <laughs> you know how much money they, they claim it's worth now? Because I have to pay taxes on it. Something like a hundred and thirty or hundred and forty thousand dollars. I can't believe it. It's not better. I mean, I've made a mess of it. <laughs> you know, it's not, it hasn't been fixed up. My wife wouldn't like what I, you know, that I'm painting downstairs and all this. But my, that, that's one thing. It's true. My wife let me paint in the dining room, and uh, you know, my, in that sense, you know, my wife was uh, was supportive. Of me being, an, 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 she knew I that. My wife had a very good understanding of the fact that well, men, well, women too now also, that men have their dreams, and they must, you know, there, there. I, I've seen a lot of times where the spouses, both male and female, in a sense, are not supportive of the person being an artist. That's wrong. You know, the, because uh, it's very important that you are supported. You know, your family has to somehow or other really uh, support the artist. It's not really a, being an artist is it's not a money making business. You can't tell somebody like if you were going into uh, I don't know what. You know, let's say you you like my son-in-law. He, he he was going into com computer. You know, he was a, a computer expert, and so he does that. But what he really loves doing is is writing history books. He find, now he's teaching history. He still has his computer god job. Thank God, because he has to support three children, two children, and my daughter. But you know, uh, but what he but you you should always have something that you that you really love because, I mean, the truth of the matter is, I mean, as much as you might love your spouse, as much as you like him, if you're an artist, it's amazing. It's, you must be obsessive about it, you must. I mean, Matisse even told his wife when he married her, he said to her, he said, "You know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll love you forever, or something like that." He says, "But I'll love my work more." 
How did she take it? Well, she took it good for a long time, and then she left him. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but he, he, he wasn't fooling around like, he wasn't, Matisse wasn't like Picasso, you know, who was actually mm -hmm. uh, uh, not, not, not what you call a faithful husband. So you being an artist and a teacher is a perfect combination. Yes, it was a perfect combination because I really loved, I really loved teaching. I found it so exciting. And I learned so much from my students. And I also learned so much because, you know, eventually I was hired to teach painting and life drawing. Uh, and, but then when I was, you know, asked to teach art history, it was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I couldn't just get up and say, you know, let's say Velasquez, you know, uh, the great Spanish painter. The, he's considered a great painter. I had to explain to students why he was great. So I had to go into, and that and that way I was a very good art history teacher because I'm the only one. Because a lot of art historians understand the iconography of a painting. They know who's who, you know, what somebody is, historical event and what somebody's saying. But I was really almost the only art history teacher that I know of that really go into the uh, into the structure of a painting, because I had to figure out, you know, I had to explain to students. If I got to know if you guys were my students, when I would give out a, the last assignment was which nobody else I know has ever done that you were supposed to pick a painting, which you either like or didn't like, and you have to have to okay. write down how you thought the painting was structured. No other artist treats you to do this. Uh, I, I don't think tests, you know, because, I mean, some people are very good at tests, you know, and that's all there is to it. You know, they can remember, you can remember a lot of things. So, um, in fact, <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. I used, to, I used to always tell my students the answers to all the questions <laughs> when I would give the review for the <laughs> tests. Because I didn't want to fail anybody. And then they started accusing me of giving out too many A's and B's. You know, but I, the only time I really felt that somebody deserved a bad grade is basically if they didn't show up to class. Right. You know, one kid once told, well, he told Jack, I remember, he did really badly. And and and, and uh, because Jack taught art history too. And, and, uh, he said, well, I've gone on all the trips. And Jack said, so what? You failed all the tests, you know? <laughs> I mean, I had to give tests. You just have to. But uh, because that's the requirement of an academic. Uh, you, you let your students come to your classes, even after they finish their classes, Yes, right? I and did. So I allowed people to come into the, into the painting class, and I allowed people who didn't pay. I, right. didn't, I didn't tell the administration that's that right. because they would have a heart attack. In <laughs> fact, <laughs> I, 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 I ended up, I told my students, this is kind of funny, you know, the, the, the thing for, you know, the, the trays that they used to give out in the, for dinner or something in the, in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I would tell my students, I'm not telling you this. But they're the best palettes you could get. <laughs> if you got two trays and, you, and you'd be using acrylics, you would just put one on top of the other and you could save the acrylics. So eventually when they found out, you know, some woman who was in charge of such stealing, oh, come on. How much do they cost you, these goddamn trays? You know, you get them by the time. So I ended up, you know, buying them and stuff. The, but, the uh, students love you. They, they follow you like groupies until well, now, they well, go to your I, shows. I, I, that's because I really like my, I really like my, you shouldn't go into, into teaching if you don't like people. And I knew people, even a lot of pe people, some people whom I liked very much. Uh, if you don't like people and you, and you don't like giving information, you know, you don't like it. And you find students annoying. You know, you have you, the sunny personality. You have to find another. You have. You should find another another occupation. <laughs> right. I mean, but but a lot of artists, to tell you the truth, they were stuck because they didn't like people, but they did. 
They needed to get work. And they, and they all they knew about was art, so they became, you know, they became teachers. I mean, uh, your famous say during the critique was, "It's terrific." Oh, that's, that's how people remember you. By that oh side. yeah, I used it. well, I did. I thought people did really great work. I thought there was really wonderful work that was done, and also a lot of it is so subjective. You know, I mean, teachers. I have seen, I have seen, in fact, I had a very good friend, a very good friend, this young woman, she's a little older than me, who, she, she got into Cooper Union when I did, but she, she drew better than anybody, anybody I have ever known in my life, because her drawings had were filled with feeling and everything. But because the teachers wanted her to, to oh, I'm sorry, go on. Sorry, sorry. I'm very sorry. She was actually, she even told me this afterwards, she was ruined by Cooper Union, and it was a free school, because the teachers, uh, you know, they had no appreciation, because they all were all into this abstract stuff. Mm -hmm. Which after a while, you know, uh, I mean, one guy at Cooper Union, I'll never forget this guy, he would do a painting, you know what I'm saying, Expressionism, he would take the paint and just go like this, just flatter it all over a canvas. Then the teacher would come in and say, oh, that's really good, I like that, I like that, you know, that's really good. Then he would rip the canvas off the stretcher he put another one on and do the same thing. You know, sh 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 paint all over the place. You know, th th and they they all, because that was the style that was in, they had to somehow or other say that it was good. But because this woman was really trying to paint realistically, oh, God, they gave her a hard time. And uh, there was actually, there was a lot of sexism in school in the old days. Mm. There really was. Girls were, were treated uh, not often. Uh, what's not, not well. what's the most important for you, Mel? What? What is the most important for you? At this moment in my life? At this moment in your life. Does it change, this thing? No, well, actually, the most important thing in my life, I would have to admit, is my children. I mean, I'm, you know, because I'm constantly worried, you know, that some, you know, I'm just worried about my children and then my grandchildren and my children's spouses. But then, of course, comes, is my art. I'm very concerned about my art. You know, I'm doing as much as I can, I think, to make sure that my art has significance, you know, when I'm dead and it isn't a burden to my children. I want them to, you know, and I'm supposed to have a show in New York, you know, now in in, uh, in my gallery in November. And oh, yeah, I hope you guys will come. In Han Hancock Gallery? Uh, yeah, Gallery Hancock. Yeah, they've been representing me since the 1980s, right. which is a long time yeah. ago. So in November, there's nothing else between that and now and then? No, there's n nothing else. Well, well, the museum is a close. You don't have any local galleries. How about the arts? Uh, oh, no, art? I, n I, I never show in, in local gar galleries. I've had a show at Artworks, you know. Artworks and, and I've had, arts, yeah. And I've had, sh I've had shows at a lot of museums in this state. Like it, I had a big show at the Morris Museum. Oh, in fact, I have a poster from it in the other room that I would like it. Do you have some lecture, maybe? Somewhere? No, I don't. I, I, I really, it's a little, first of all, I used to give slide lectures and no, nobody, nobody uses slides anymore. And you think I understand anything about the computer? <laughs> you so know, I'm an old like, man. My generation finds this all very disturbing. <laughs> my, my grandchildren know more than I do <laughs> about this, uh, this, you know, you times did, have changed. You did Mel on Mel yeah. uh, show in El Arcia, and you talk about your paintings from yes, one I to did, the other. Yeah. Will you have something like that? I recorded it, and it's a quite nice film about about well, that. Well, no, event. I I might have a, sh I would give a, I might 
uh, talk my gallery into letting me give a talk during my show. Okay. And then I, I, mm -hmm. I've been, uh, another place where I've been showing uh, lately is because um, I go to Cape Cod every summer. I mean, I've been, my wife and I used to go to Cape Cod a lot because I had friends there, but then after my wife passed, I ended up going there every summer for actually almost a month and I would rent a house and my children would come there and I would paint a lot of the artists who were living on Cape Cod because it's sort of an artist colony. So I've ended up having actually um, um, shows at museums in Massachusetts. I'm becoming now a Massachusetts artist. Mm -hmm. So, like, at the, I had a sh big show at the Cape Cod Museum of Art, and I'm supposed to have a show at the Promise Town Art Association and Museum in 2023. I gotta live that long, <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but uh, but the museums are all closed, and and I'm in the collections now of two museums in in Massachusetts. They have my work, work mm -hmm. in their collection. And, uh, you know, I like going there, and uh, it, it's nice. I, I get my children, grandchildren, they like going to the beach. I hate the beach. <laughs> there are three things I hate about the beach. I hate the sun, I hate the sand, and I hate the water. So why are you <laughs> going to come there? It's only nice at night because I burn all the time. You know, it's like a waste of time. You know, but uh, so, but, but my my daughter, I, I, my son, not as much, likes the beach a lot, and it's not, not and it's nice because my, uh, and sometimes my niece comes, uh, she comes actually with her daughter actually, uh, with Georgia. Uh, my since my my daughter can come with. Her two children, and then Joshua can come with his three children. The kids, you know, I mean, when, let's face it, what do they want to hang around with their grandfather? He's boring after a while. You know, so they they, they, they like each other a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, Leonardo and Joshua's children really fight for who's going to sleep in the same bed with Leonardo, who is Francesca's youngest. How old, is Le how old is Leonardo? Uh, Leonardo is now, uh, let's see, he was born in 2007, so he'll be, uh, uh, he'll be, he, he'll be, he's 13 now, he'll be 14. And my granddaughter was, Joshua's daughter was also born in that year, and they they become very good friends. They communicate with each other on Zoom or whatever you call it, mm -hmm. on the computer, and they all. And Joshua has uh, two uh, two sons, two, and they all like Leonardo. You know, my oldest grandson, who was uh, he, how old is he now? He was he's seventeen. He's from you your know. son, from the first wife. No, no, no. He, he's the son. He's my daughter's son. So uh, he's seventeen. He's he's seventeen. What is his name? And, and uh, Vincent. Vincent. Uh, okay. Yeah, and, and one child is named Leonardo. By the way, <laughs> they sometimes fight of who is a better painter, <laughs> Vincent Van Gogh or Leonardo. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but they weren't named after artists. Mm -hmm. I mean, Vincent and Leonardo because. Uh, Vincent is called Vincent because, uh, you know, my daughter is half Italian, my son in law is completely Italian. So, the, you know, it's basically that's an Italian name, really. It's like Vincenzo. And Leonardo was called Leonardo, actually, because, uh, you know, he wasn't a Da Vinci. That's just another Italian name, you know. And also, Leonardo was not too interested in art, but Vincent is. Vincent is. We took him to see a uh, a Vincent Van Gogh show. Uh, Vincent's a, a very sensitive young man. He's really quite extraordinary. Well, they're all. I love them all. They're all terrific. What's the name of your daughter, uh, granddaughter? Oh, my granddaughter, Rayona, R A Y O N A. It's also after some artist. No, she. My son gave his 
all his, all my son's children up with his first wife, who, by the way, was not a good wife, but she's really a terrific mother. And so Rayona was the first born, and then Zev is the second born. That actually means wolf or something in German, and Ami, which means French, and fr and uh, which is, means friend in French, but. That's not why he was called that. My son gives his children unusual names. So your children are Italian after your wife? Yes, my uh, my my, cho my children uh, were very... Because uh, what about Leipzig? Doesn't Leipzig is German? Leipzig is a German name, yes. Leipzig is a German name. And so, my, but, so my son's children are Leipzig's, whereas my daughter's children are Pecones now. Right. You know, they're Pecones. What does it matter? Well, we have this dilemma with my daughter. What? Uh, well, well, maybe you want to ask the question. So, uh, I went to school Mel, and I'm a therapist, and I specialize in art therapy. And I believe the process of making art is more important than the end product. Oh, definitely. <laughs> so yeah, I've been having this no, argument you the with my no, specific definitely, I'll tell you the truth. Art is so lucky. That's why art therapy is really good. Art is so goddamn lucky because the doing of it is incredible. And though you like to have, you know, you like to get recognition, all that, that that's really nice too. But. Once the painting is done, you you know you it's it's the act of painting is so exciting, and it's amazing how many people, you know the what's his name, the, Philip, the guy who just died, you know the, he died at almost a hundred, Queen Elizabeth's mm -hmm. husband, he took a painting when he retired, he became painting, and Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill said it said, Winston Churchill suffered actually from depression. They called him his black plague or something. And and he said he, he couldn't have done it, done it without painting. So the end product is not important? The end product is not as important, no. We didn't say, yeah, we never said that. Uh, uh, no, the end product, the product is important in the sense that you want to solve the painting. You want it to look good, but once it looks good, <laughs> you almost you then become more obsessed with the other painting. Listen, I painted Bernarda Shaw when she was ninety-eight, and she was an incredible woman. She was an artist. All she was interested in was the painting she was working on. I couldn't believe it, and she she kept asking me. She said. Uh, what do you think about my painting? She said, do you have any advice? So I remember giving her some advice, that you should do this, that, and the next. I thought that's what she wanted. Then while I was painting, I was working on painting a studio, she stopped, and she started working on a painting. She didn't do a goddamn thing that I mentioned. <laughs> she was just interested in finishing a painting according to her thing. The artist is in charge. <laughs> Excuse me. You really, but I think with therapy, it's not the end product that counts. It's, it counts to the extent that it does mean that, you know, because you're fascinated by your painting, you know, until it's finished. But once it's finished, the fascination almost ends. I'll tell you the truth. It almost ends. But when, when, in the case of real artists, I think this is true. There could be a fire across the street, let's say. Houses could be burning down. If you have a problem to solve in your painting, you, you can't even go to sleep Unless it's un your house until, until you solve it. I got up, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 86 soon. The other night with this painting that I'm working on now, all of a sudden in the middle of the night I woke up I figured, oh, it's just, it's just not right. So I got up and I made changes in the middle of the night. You know, and I know that if my, you know, my wife were alive, she'd be saying, you're going to go kill yourself. You know, you stay up late. 
But that's, that doesn't matter. It, it, does, it doesn't really matter. You know, you really have to do the goddamn thing. So, no. interestingly enough, uh, I just want to finish this statement. In the old days, when I I would sometimes stay up all night to paint to finish my work on painting, which I can't do now anymore. I got up in the middle of them. It's true to work on this, on this painting, but I do get tired. You know, I need to take a nap lately. Uh, you know, because you have to admit you're uh, uh, you get old. But the best painting I do is actually in the morning when I wake up. And I think I have full energy, and the light is coming in, you know, to my house, because my studio is downstairs, which is very good. I don't paint in this room anymore. This used to be my studio where I would paint. Oh, but I did paint in the dining room. My wife gave me that, that place to paint. And I'll tell you the truth, her friends would sometimes come, and they'd be shocked, oh God, you know. There were, I mean, there's nothing about being an ordinary person, but they would be shocked. They would say, "Why? Why?" Some woman told my wife, "Why don't you make your husband paint in the bay in the cellar?" <laughs> <laughs> it's really ridiculous because it's. Uh, by the way, as soon as I moved to this house, because I had such a large space from the living room into the, what was our dining room, uh, to look at my paintings, I was able to finish all, all my paintings. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, uh, but your daughter is right. The finished painting doesn't count. So all those paintings in the museums and in private collections and everything, all the portfolio that stays here after you are gone, that's nothing? Well, I'm glad they're in museums. I must admit that. I prefer having my paintings in museum collections and they're in museums. You know, I have a painting, actually the painting of Bernard Sean is in the Springville Museum in Utah. But, uh, and I have two paintings in Massachusetts museums. I have two paintings in, uh, in museums in Philadelphia. And then I have a lot of paintings in different museums. I have like seven or eight paintings in the State Museum. And I have paintings in the Montclair Museum, in the Morris Museum, the Doyes Museum. I, ha I had a painting actually in the Jersey City Museum, but that that mu that museum actually closed down, which is I think is kind of tragic. I don't feel bad about it. Mainly because they gave their paintings uh, to the Zimmerle Museum, which owns actually one of my best paintings. The painting that I did of my son called Joshua's Room. Oh, and I have a painting, and I was elected to the National Academy, which I'm obviously pleased about. I mean, it makes you. And they have a sort of a museum. They they, they were in existence since the not the 19th century. They have paintings by Thomas Aikens, so I'm in a museum with his him in the museum. But uh, they're looking for a new spot now. Though. Do you think they're going to make a Mel Leipzig Museum? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to be here to be in charge or anything. <laughs> you know, you're going to be. You know, you got to face it. We we can't live forever. We can't live forever. forever. The only person I I ever knew who did say. Uh, my my father-in-law, whom actually I liked very much, we got on really quite well when he was living with us. My my uh, son, who was his grandson, was running past him, and all of a sudden my father-in-law said to me, "Why do we have to die?" You know. But uh, we got to make room for the next generation, otherwise if we we. we um, I don't know where we'd, everybody would be. If you live forever, all yeah. your paintings would not fit in the museum uh, no, there, of my Leipzig. There, yeah, there, will, there wouldn't be anything. It's kind of weird. But uh, it's very important that you feel that you've accomplished something, that you'd 
I, I mean, I am glad that I'm an artist and that I, I did what I wanted to do because if you are an artist, nobody wants you to paint. Nobody. Nobody really cares. My parents didn't really like it. My mother didn't think I should go to Yale. She wanted me to get a job to support the family, really. I was going to go to art school. I knew I had to get a degree. But uh, uh, nobody really cares. You have to care about it. It's your responsibility. You can't blame your parents, you know. You can't blame your spouses. You can't blame, well, they don't do this. Big deal. That doesn't mean anything. You got to do it. A person is a person. You have a will. And you got to really do it. So I'm, I do feel, I, I don't feel that I wasted my life. You know, I feel I really did a lot of good things. But the only thing I, I do feel worried about is that I don't want my paintings to be a burden to my children. You know, the ones that are, are left because, you know, in this country they tax you. On, on your artwork. It's ridiculous. There, it's not really, a lot of countries do that. It's really kind of stupid. They shouldn't do that. To art. And they base the value of your work on the highest prices that your work has sold for. Mm -hmm. And now some of my paintings have sold really for a lot of money, but th that's only once in a while. Come on. Come on. It's stu stupid. You know, the, 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 this country should be more supportive of its arts. And it's, it should be much more supportive than it is. I have a question. Yeah. Can yeah. Elizabeth ask you a question? What? Yeah. Can I ask a question now? Oh, sure. Now, what is um, biggest regret and then biggest accomplishment of your life? The biggest regret. <laughs> you don't have any regrets. That's, I, I that's obvious. I can't think of any. Of the only re, the only regret I have. This is kind of funny. I mean, more. real regret. In a certain sense, I'm the I'm I'm the cousin of Arthur Miller. You know the playwright, the guy who wrote uh, Death of a Salesman. Yes, Death of a Salesman. Sure, I know. Yeah, he's he's one of the great. Yeah, yeah that, and and he also uh, uh, and. It, I never met him. I never met him. And he once came on a Wednesday night to Princeton to speak. And I'm a big fan of, I, I like his, his plays, but I'm, I'm a much bigger fan of Ibsen, the Norwegian playwright, the guy who wrote A Dollhouse. And so, uh, uh, and he's, he was very influenced by Ibsen. And, but I was teaching on Wednesday night at an art history class. And I could have gone to Princeton. You know, several people told me, well, just why didn't you just go there? I said, well, I can't leave my class. I mean, really, let's face it. I could have, I could have left my class. I just felt that I was doing something wrong, so I didn't go see him. So I do regret that, because I would have liked to have gone to see him. And then I would, he married Marilyn Monroe, you know. So I was ended up being my children are thrilled to be related to Marilyn Monroe, especially my daughter. You know, she tells everybody that she was related to Marilyn Monroe. But uh, you know, I can't think of anything. But the the things that I accomplished, uh, I think is is my family. That's what I'm. I mean, I find it just amazing that uh, you know that I have children and grandchildren, and I only got that because I was able to get my wife, and that I painted. That's that's what my accomplishment. That is what my, your accomplishment is. It's uh, it's you know it's family and art. You know that's the main thing. Now, do you think that's the recipe for a? Uh, happy and fulfilling life. Like my dad said, he describes you as a very cheerful person. What? He describes you as a very cheerful person, like a very happy person. So would you say that the key to a happy life is family and pursuing your dreams? Yes, I think so. I think so. 
it's really sort of uh, that that is it's very important that you do that you do what you want that you set out to do i don't know why it's important but it just is and of course family is of the utmost importance you know i mean when people tell even people you know who are not artists uh you know, like my uh, my daughter's uh, uh, father-in-law, who I'm, I'm quite friendly with, and uh, we're, we're, we're really, they call me and they give me food. They're really very nice. Nobody's as old as I am. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I remember, though, that my, my son-in-law's father once told me, you know, family is the most important thing. You know, he's got all, well, he has more children than I do, and, and we we share only, you know, two of my grandchildren. He's got a lot more grandchildren than I got. But, you know, that's the most important thing. And uh, I, I think it's, uh, I think it's true. I think in this country, you know, you know, people, and I've had this actually, was even pe people whom I painted have told me things I couldn't believe. Actually, you know, they think like, you know, that pl pleasure is important. It is. I mean, I'm not saying you should, but they, you know, so, uh, but I think it's over, it's overstated. I remember even, you know, you know, my wife and I, after my wife retired, we went to Europe a lot. And I actually only wanted to go to Spain. I, went, we, I said, let's go to Spain. I want to see Velazquez. I wanted to go to for two weeks. Marriage is in no way. So we had to spend, uh, for two days, I mean. I thought I'd go. I'd go to the Prado, see the Velazquez, and then come home. She said, no. So we spent two weeks in, in uh, had to spend two weeks in, in and after a while, you feel like you're going out of your mind. <laughs> Except the thing about travel is, of course, you can come home and you can show these slides to your friends. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've been to this place and to that place. You know, those are, th th that's important. You know, but it's not as, uh, it's not as important. You still paint. and uh, I still paint. How many yeah. paintings do you paint at, at one time? Well, I, I I was able to finish uh, uh, about uh, during this pandemic. I don't know how many paintings. A, a lot of them are in here now. Oh, you're going to show me that. How how long does one painting take? Average? Well, it could, it could take uh, the paintings I'm working on now were started so many years ago, and I, then I left aside, okay. like the ones. Yeah, and, and knowing one me, and knowing myself. I mean, I think if it wasn't for the pandemic, I would have constantly been starting other paintings and keep saying to myself, I'll just get to these other paintings later on. I had about 20 paintings, I think. Started. That, that, were, not, that were not at all finished. I was working on a series of paintings called Homage to the Arts of New Jersey which dealt, which in which I was using as the models in the painting, the people who worked at the New Jersey State Council of the Arts, and then I would put in the names, the names or images of famous New Jersey artists. I just needed people, real people, in the painting, but they were not the subject of the painting. The subject of the painting, like I put in. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Frank Sinatra. Well, he's dead, you know. So I had a, I used a photograph, or Paul Robeson, or I put in I put in actually one of Lou's photographs, because you know he's a great New Jersey photographer. Do you know Aubrey Kaufman? No, he was another good African American uh, photographer. And Stieglitz, he was born in Stieglitz, Hoboken. Yeah, yeah. Not George so, O'Keefe. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he married George O'Keefe, and so they. Uh, I put them. I put in one of Stieglitz's photographs. Mm -hmm. I mean, I you know Stieglitz's not going to pose me, yeah. 
So that's that. And um, anyway, nobody cares what he looks like. They only care about him. You know, his work. That's what really counts. So uh, uh, that that series I finished. Then I was working on a series. There used to be a, 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 an art um, a, a gallery in in Newark called Algira, which was founded by these. Um, two young African-American guys. And I had a show in there in 2015. So I ended up starting, if I ever show someplace, I open and start doing paintings there. So I ended up starting doing a painting using the staff as the, as the models. And I hadn't finished, a, I had finished a lot of the paintings of the, of the staff, but I hadn't finished the background. So a lot of those, in fact, one of those paintings are in the back room, in the room there. I mean, a, a copy of it, the G. Clay print of it. Uh, so th uh, that I, that series I called Homage to the uh, to Algira Newark, because Algira was in Newark. And then I was the, um, I still am, I guess, but I don't think I can go there. I, I was the um, uh, a visiting artist of Lawrence High School, you know. So I would go, so they asked me to come there and be a visiting artist. I said, well, you know what I'll do? I said, I'll paint all the students. I ended up painting the students, the teachers, the dean, the president of the school, everybody, you know, that would just walk in and agree to post. And they couldn't take money, you know, because they actually paid me for a while for doing it. Uh, you know, it was like, you know, because they got a grant for it, but it was kind of nice, and the students seemed to like it. So uh, uh, I had to finish that that series. And then there were paintings of, of people that I had started that I also had to finish, uh, that I, ho I hope Margaret's going to curate my show at the... Uh, uh, at Gallery Hanag, I, I hope she picks some of the paintings that I would have, uh, have have put in a show. So she decides about what paintings. Are yeah, going she's the, the one who really, has, uh, you know, she's the one who has to decide. But I am sending out. I curated my show completely at at uh, at the Morris Museum. That had about forty paintings, mm -hmm. and that was a big show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll show you the poster from there. Do you have somebody posing for you right now in your in your house? Do you have somebody coming here? Yes, actually, uh, I uh, I have several people coming. Um, I don't know who if you know who Isaac Witkin is. I don't. But Isaac Witkin was a famous New Jersey sculptor. He was a student. He was the favorite. Uh, of assistant of Henry Moore. Mm -hmm. He was he actually was born in Australia, but he he painted in England. He he, and I ended up doing a painting of his daughter sitting in front of these uh, three versions of his sculpture, uh, grounds for sculpture. I can't right. I can't go back there, but Nadine wants me to do another painting of her father's work because she's very interested in, she's hoping that the paintings will do something for his reputation. So she's coming here on April 23rd with a lot of his sculpture, you know, a smaller sculpture, not big sculpture, and I'm going to do a painting of her uh, with the sculpture. And then what I'm hoping to do, I'm hoping to be able to eventually talk my gallery uh, if they think they can make something out of it, if they think they can make something out of it, if they, if they would actually put on a show of just the two paintings that I will have done then of Isaac's work with some of Isaac's sculpture, you know, for just one or two days, and then we'll invite just, not the public, but we'll invite critics and museum people just to the gallery. To see, you know, to help with Isaac, because Isaac is really a, an extraordinary sculptor. And then I, you know, I was doing uh, uh, paintings of um, of the graffiti artists, and one of the graffiti artists, do you do you know Dean Nocenzi? 
Have you ever heard of him? I, I think so, yes, because there is this show here, the graffiti show in July or August, and you already painted the show I, in Robert, Robert Wood Johnson was yeah. with the other guy, the, the, yeah, the, yeah, the I painted rainbow him. guy. Yeah, I, I painted Leon, but Dean, Dean wrote me a letter and said he wants me to, he asked me if I would paint him again in front of this image of his mother that he did. But that means, I'll tell you the truth, this is one of the things about getting old. That means I'm, I would have to, because I painted the last time I painted him when I painted Leon, I went down to Terra Psycho here in Trenton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I set up in the street, you know, in front of the building, because I, I didn't know what, you know, when I originally was going to do graffiti artists, I had no idea what they did. I thought I'd go to their house and maybe I'd, I would do something, you know, in the house. But then, you know, they said, come outside. And then I got unbelievably fascinated with their work. So I told him, now this deals with photography, that I, uh, he, pay, he, he actually paints for photographs. You know, he, he holds a photograph in his hand and then he spray paints the wall. Uh, I, it's unbelievable. Uh, I, <coughs> I, I told him I would paint. He would come to my house. I paint him here in my house. He, I need give me a photograph of his mother of the painting he did of his mother, because mm -hmm. I, I originally thought that maybe his mother could come too, but I didn't realize that you know she had passed away. So he would come in and give me a photograph, and then they would. I would just come to the photograph and bag him up. What's the big deal to that? But him, I would have to do from life. And then I have scheduled. I'm um, doing. A, there was an art critic of the. Um, um, he was an art critic of the Star Ledger. He was their leading art critic. His name is Dan Bischoff. I did one painting of him already in his house. He lives in South Orange. I befriended him after he wrote some very nice things about me. And then he said he wanted to come here and do it. He's an artist too. He wanted to do a, a painting or a drawing of me. So I said, oh good, you come here, I'll paint you. Well, I'll be you painting me. So we, he's going to come here too. I have those dates are already set up. But then there are other people I did, well, I want to paint you and your children here. And then there's a woman, I haven't set up a date with her yet, doesn't call me back, Joan Perks, who's the head of the Friends of the Trenton City Museum. And I want to paint her with her daughter. I like doing a lot of paintings. I don't know why this is, but I like painting families a lot. I, even when I painted the teachers at at uh, at the high school, I then wanted to do paintings of them with their children, mm -hmm. because I figured, what better? I want to show that these people are people. Mm -hmm. They're not just you know they they're not just uh, you know. And let's uh, and the truth is the matter matter is I mean you have such a wonderful daughter, and this largely due to you. You know, it really is. No, you know, it's true. You know, I mean, I've seen so many people who were ruined by their parents. You know, it's just awful. Their parents have done terrible things, you know, in a way. You know, just having a child is something. Not everybody should be a parent, I'm beginning to think. You know, there's a, there, a, the, the, but uh, I forgot what I was leading up to. But I do like like the idea that I did like the idea of showing that there were people. So some of the best painting that I did of the high school, at the high school, I did one painting of a woman named Cheryl Ang. She's the woman who originally asked me to come there. I did a painting of her with her daughter in the school. Do you know a guy named Sean Carney? Does that ring a bell to you at all? The guy who just died, the actor. He's an artist. Oh, so no but he, taught, he teaches, he has two young sons, they're probably not so young anymore, but I, I, they pose for, for me too with him at the school. And then Khalila Sabri, have you ever heard of her? She's an artist, she, she's retired from teaching. But I painted her with her son 
in her studio, not mm -hmm. in the school. Mm -hmm. But I consider it part of my high school series. In fact, that's part of both my high school series and my uh, art series because I show her paintings. Mm -hmm. uh, and there. Yeah. Well, listen, should we go inside? Yeah. Are you running out of tape? Sure, sure. No, 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 I'm not. Otherwise, can, it's gonna go, you'll can, go on forever. Can, can you show me some paintings here? So oh, yes, for sure. Them. You want to see something? Wait, wait, and now, no, I'm sorry, but it just takes me a while to get used to standing. That's why I've been sitting. I really have to get my... Uh, shit. I'm sorry, I, I get dizzy. It's understandable, but... Yeah, could you get me a... I have, I have, I have uh, bottles of water in the kitchen. Yeah, that's, I was always told by a nurse, uh, what do I do? Oh, I'll show you this, this painting, which I like. Is somebody it. visiting you, Mel? Maybe you need something, maybe... What? Maybe you need something, you need some, like for instance... To no, just water. My, my, my nurse told me, whenever you feel dizzy, just drink water. It's amazing, because a lot of old people get dehydrated easily. And you know, coffee isn't good for you. I mean, coffee works the opposite of water. So does alcohol. So you drink coffee and alcohol? No, I don't. I don't. I hardly ever drink wine. I never, never drink wine, but but I, and I do lately have a cup of coffee in the morning. Okay, but I'll, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull something out, okay? I'll pull, I'll pull, pull, pull a few paintings out then. Show them. you get this painting? Yes, 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 yes. Is it okay if it's over there? Yeah, that's that's very good. This is good enough. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is artworks. You know where artworks yes. is in Trenton? Yes, I do, yes. And, and, and that's uh, Addison, and that's, I've forgotten, Jesse. And they were, uh, at our, and that's her dog, Jesse's dog. And that's a painting that I did at artworks a long time ago with uh, Helen Shannon who is now passed, and then I put the night on it. But they posed for me. Actually, in artworks, I think you were having a, this a live exhibition that somebody could come and see you paint. Yeah. It was 2005 or something. I, that's I right, yes, that's right. I, I, I also, how do you like this painting? You like it's it? a very peculiar format. You can see the ceiling. Yes, I, mean, I was really taken by... I mean, the background means a lot in my painting. Yeah, very nice, beautiful, beautiful smell as always. And there's a dog there. Yeah. Show on the first I, one. I, I really like the way. It, in my paintings, the background means as much as the figures, <laughs> mm -hmm. to be honest. But I must have a figure in this painting. I don't know if I couldn't paint it. Wait one second. Let me. I can take this one. This is a very interesting thing. Eh? This is because I'll explain to you this. This was done in Massachusetts. Can I sit down? Of oh, course. This was done in Massachusetts. And it originally was done because of her. That's Laura Tryon Jennings, and that's her. Uh, the guy she just married, or she married, in fact, I brought this to their wedding, I call it actually uh, Laura Tryon Jennings, the wedding painting. And this is one of her paintings, she's part of my artist series. But when I originally, uh, Laura told me to do this painting, I, she told me, uh, she lives in a place 
called Marshfield, which is a small town, but it's right on that Sound or something in Massachusetts. And she said it was right outside a house. Well, it wasn't right outside a house. <laughs> I didn't see it there. It was beyond. You had to go out, not from the window of a house. You had to go out onto the porch, literally, yeah, to see the sea. sea. So, <coughs> how to on the deck? What I ended up doing was this. Now, this is a wild perspective in a certain way. Oh, he plays the guitar. You know, and he's like, and she, I think, is holding a paintbrush. Uh, that's her easel over there. But I went out of her house then, after I painted her, and I made believe there was no wall. And then I painted the landscape from the porch. Oh, so you, you took know, over. So I could, so I could, I don't know, is there. So you eliminated the walls. I, I, I eliminated the walls. Mm. And I really like this painting. Yeah, so you are a surrealist. Well, sort of. Sort of, it's yeah. Not, it's not, not realism anymore. <laughs> it's not exactly the thing. So I've done a lot of paintings now where I get rid of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I think I want to paint what's outside so what? So, you know, what, what the hell? I can't, you know, but... Uh, it was brilliant. So, it was beautiful. So, uh, it was fun. But it's a, it's a different, it's a difficult problem to... I've done two paintings now of Laura because the two of them, it's the second marriage for both of them. They have five children. Wait, is it five, two? Yeah, five children. And I, so I did a whole painting, another painting of their children, their five children. And then I put this painting, I copied it, but I had to change it actually for the, to make it work with the painting, uh, you know. Um, so that you knew that they they were the parents. So they really, in a sense, were part of the subject, but they were in the painting. You know that my wide angle lens. What? My wide angle lens in my camera makes exactly the same perspective as yours. So oh, I know. That's why people often think that I use a wide angle. So after yeah, all, I don't, because nobody actually. First of all. When you're doing a painting, even, oh, don't worry about those colors. Keep uh, doing the steady then. Should I, should I go get another painting? Yes, please. Mel, do you want me to bring you a painting? Oh, no, I can do it. Don't worry. I'm okay. Yeah, I had to pour it. Just that, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, I, I, it just takes me a while from the time that I get up. I can't, I, oh. Getting old is not bad, but I want to show you the <laughs> painting I did of the mayor. Oh, I'll show you a couple of these. These might be interesting. But let me take this down a little bit. Does this does the plastic interfere? No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. You don't have to take because the plastic. Because this is Reed Guschioro. He's the mayor of Trenton. And by the way, my wife, there were only two politicians my wife liked. She liked Rush Holt and she liked Reed. And so I already did a painting of Rush Holt, you know, because uh, my wife was tough. <laughs> she had a very low opinion of politicians. So, but those two she really liked, because they, they really meant to do, do a lot of good. So, but the painting behind him, though, I don't know if you've... Uh, uh, Trenton should do something to uh, make it uh, seem more important. It's actually a mural by a guy named Everett Shen. Have you ever heard of him? He was part of the Ashcan School. This is his greatest work. He did it in council chambers in City Hall. The mayor has to see this painting yet, by the way. <laughs> because, you know, th this plague has come and uh, I thought that was a party. And so, uh, boy, if you, if you can, I'll, t I'll take out another painting. Please, 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 as many as possible, that'd be great, yes. Oh, really? More the better. Oh, good. Okay, wait, well, let's, let's go this way first. There are a couple here that I would like to show you, but the, the, you know, these are ones that I completed during the play. Oh, 
I'll show you the one with Lou in it. I think Lou's photograph. This is part of my Homage to the Arts of New Jersey series. These are people um, who are in, work for the New Jersey State Council of the Arts. Uh, this actually is a, a, a painting that I did, but it's basically, I put it in because I wanted to show that they, it's a production that they did at my school of Ibsen's Hedda Gabler, and I had them all pose me. I wanted to show that, this, that the Arts Council gives money to the arts. In the thing. These are the names of all sorts of people who, uh, let me look at let me look at this goddamn thing. I can't see it. Oh, you know Susan Sarandon, the actress. Have you heard of her? What movie? Oh shit! Do you remember the title? No, she's oh she's in the movie called The Client, I think. It's a, no. It's a, uh, and you know Dorothy Parker? She she's a poetess. She's from New Jersey. Uh, and then, oh, that's, you know B.B. Newworth? Right, yes. She's a dancer. Yes. She's from New Jersey. And then, uh, and then there are the names of, uh, let me see, who else is in this? Oh, Clement Price was a big supporter of the artist. The artist David Wojnarowicz, he's from New Jersey. Michael Graves, have you heard of him? Yeah. He's an architect. He's from New Jersey. I painted him. Everett Shin, that's the painting you saw. Uh, he's from New Jersey. Well, worked in New Jersey, this, obviously. This architect is on a wheelchair and he has a house in West Windsor. That's right. That's the yes. one. And you painted five paintings of him. That's right, yes. I did a huge thing of him. He, he's passed since then. That's Joyce Kilmer, you know, the poet who wrote Trees? Whatever it, and you know Count Basie, have you heard of him? He's a, a famous African American. Okay. And then I want to show you this thing. I want you to photograph this if you don't mind. I want to show you this because this is to prove that I don't think that I think that photography is an art. <laughs> Also, by the way, my daughter would have my head if I ever I said anything in public against the photography. <laughs> my, my, my daughter also says, well, it's good for a painting. <laughs> okay. That's Lou's photograph. His grandson? His, no, his step, step son. Step no, 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 that, that's a, paint, a, a photograph that he took of some girl. Oh, really? And that's a photograph nice. by, uh, what's his name, by Aubrey Kaufman, whose name is here. This is a photograph by, uh, oh, I don't think this is Stieglitz. This is, uh, oh, God, I have to know what I'm going to Dorothy Lang. Dorothy Lang, yeah, she's a famous photographer. Yep. Uh, there's F. Scott Fitzgerald, he's from New Jersey. There's... Junot uh, Dias. Oh, oh, oh yeah, he's from New Jersey. And and then that's... Uh, uh, what's her name again? Uh, uh, Sherman, oh, she, oh, she's a photographer. Uh, what, what is her name? Cindy Sherman. And that's Whitney Houston. This is Robert Smithson. This is George Innes, he's a major American painter. That's a painting by uh, Carter, uh, uh, Clarence Carter, who is a f uh, well known. And this one is by Huey Lee Smith. And oh, and there's Danny DeVito, he's from New Jersey. This Christopher Reeves, you know, the guy who played Superman or something. He gets... Uh, oh, and here's Stieglitz. Paralyzed. The, 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 that's Stieglitz, his, right. his wife's hands, that's Joe Drogi's hands. Mm -hmm. New Jersey artists. He turned out to be a rather lousy husband, by the way. 
Also Stiglitz to Georgia O'Keeffe? Well, but the, well the, I doubt if she was very good either as a wife. But the, 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 they, got, they got on, well, first of all, he drove her crazy. You know, because in those days, to take a photograph is not like now, where you just push the finger down and it's over. You had to put, put plates in and take it. It was like to go, and she, he constantly made a, made a pose for him. I mean, uh, I'm sure she didn't mind. But she couldn't stand this family, I think, so she didn't mind. She's a fancy woman. I, lo I love George O'Keefe, she's a terrific painter. But I have, I have something else I want to show you that I think would be nice. Put in this. Oh, should I? No, because the painting faces this way. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. You want, you want to see it? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, no. Now, this is... Uh, do, you, do you know the restaurant called Trenton Social? In, here in Trenton? I think so. Yeah, I had a show there. And this is a guy, this is a guy named T.C. Nelson. He actually went to high school with my... Uh, with my, both my daughter and son-in-law. And I had a show at his place of my graffiti paintings. This is a, a, a detail of one of the graffiti paintings there. That's Dino Rochenzi. So I painted him in his restaurant. He hasn't seen this yet. This is I finished this. All these paintings I'm showing you now were finished now. Oh. And th that's how you finish them and you pack them in the fo foil? That's well, when I have them framed, my framer puts them like this to protect them. Got it. You know, because uh, I have a, I have a, what is it, what they call a, a, a revocable truck. And there are rules that you have to follow, you know, for my paintings. Oh, I want to show you this. I hope you can see this. Well, I don't see. Man. This is yours? Wait. Yeah. It doesn't look like yours. Oh no, those are graffitis, okay. Yeah, this is... Wait, let me... This. This is Lank. Do you ever, do you know who Jonathan Connor is? They're all graffiti artists. Mm -hmm. Wait, let me move over here so I can see it. And they did these graffiti images of their pets. Isn't that amazing? What was that? What, uh, That's on the on the walls of Terra Cycle. Really? In in Trends. And you know what's amazing? After doing something as extraordinary as this. If I didn't do this goddamn painting, you paint it over. Th they, they paint over it. So it's gone. It's gone. Nobody, you know, that's one of the amazing things. I mean, even in, with this, uh, you plastic over it. You can see how striking this image is. And then, of course, that's when I made, you know, the sky a different color. Because you know, what are you going to do with work like this? Well, I just didn't think blue was right. <laughs> but there's no sky on this painting. No, the, red. the red is the sky. The red is the sky, yes, you're right. Well, the, the sky so can the sometimes be red, I guess. If there's a, and her, uh, 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 Liz had done her, uh, her cat, and her cat had died, so they put a halo over it. Oh. The dog in the middle belongs to Dean, 
and the dog on the right belongs to Lank, and then I put their names in. This, is, you know, graffiti artists have fake names, and I think one of the reasons for that is they wanted to sign their work, but they didn't want it because it used to be illegal to do graffiti. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, they, everybody wants it on their walls, but you could go to jail. So they wouldn't put their own name on, they put on a fake name. That's Lank, Roz, and Sid. Um, because uh, Dean and Ochenzi's name is Roz, and Elizabeth's name, her last name is Sidla, was Sid. So the Sid is departed. What? Uh, Sid is already departed. Oh no, Sid is, well the, she's departed the since then, they're not a couple anymore. But uh, her cat is what's departed. The, she did the cat. There are some girls who do graffiti art too. It's not just men. Mm. I mean, I think that's incredible, don't you? I mean, that the, not the painting I'm talking about. I'm just just to, to do the, and they have a photograph in their hand. They go like this. They just spray it. It took me longer, to, I think, probably to paint this painting. Than them to paint for them to do the original. You immortalize the cat. And what? You, you, on your painting, you immortalize the cat, who is no more, and yeah, also the, the, well, the that's right. she girlfriend and boyfriend. Well, immortalize the cat, but then, then the immortalization goes down the drain, because then they spray it. I don't know what they do. They paint over it. But the guy who does, who runs uh, uh, Terra Psycho, he's very young. You know. And he's a millionaire. And, and he's a millionaire, yes, that's true. He is a millionaire. Have you I been paint, I actually painted him, but let me tell you, he was a terrible model <laughs> because he was constantly on the phone. I think he was. He's constantly busy. Yep. Because you know he's got a he's got a lot of energy, and he does. Uh, let me put this back here. Oh, wait, let me see if I got something here that. Oh, these are my Ibsen paintings. This is old. I don't know if you've ever, have you ever heard of the play Pierre Gint? No. It's a poetic drama, but it was, it was translated by this guy, Ralph Fielder, who I became very good friends with. This is one of his sons, Eric. He married this girl who's from Holland, so I ended up putting a map of Holland in, and I put his father's uh, translation of Pierre Gint in. show us the paintings upstairs perhaps? Upstairs? Yeah, in the living room, right? Oh, in the living room, yeah, but not upstairs. I have no paintings upstairs anymore. I used to. And what, is it okay if I shut the lights off now? Sure. Just want you to step in and walk up this. to sit in front of these paintings? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, well, no, Maybe you can talk. Let me explain what it is. Yeah, talk, talk a little bit. I got it. I just finished this. In fact, I finished it yesterday. <laughs> mm. This is my niece. This is her husband, John. 
This is his son by a first marriage. This is the, her daughter, their, their daughter. Her name is Georgia. This is my, this is, a, this is from a photograph. This is also from a photograph. In fact, the photograph is over there. You can see how I changed it. Uh, I acted as my niece's father at her wedding. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's me and Nicole. And this is my daughter, Francesca. This is Nicole, and this is my sister, Jody. Wait, I'm gonna figure. If you don't mind, I'm gonna go sit just for a second. Now, do you want me to move this chair over here? No, 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 I have this. I'm just gonna sit down, yeah. How do you like that painting? I've, I've, nobody's ever seen it. Great. So you're trying to squeeze as many people as possible into one painting? Yes, uh, but I, I kind of like this a lot because, uh, you know, some of the people are painted from life and then some of the people are painted from the photographs. Photograph. There's the photograph of me walking my niece down the, you know, the whatever. Uh, Which one? Uh, uh, the big one. There. It's right over oh. here. <laughs> That one. Oh, yes, 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 okay. yes, See, it's that, that's the photograph of yes, me, uh, I, and the one next to it was the other one. But I want, I needed to move the red up into the background, so I changed the background. What does it matter? This painting. Let me show you this, because I, I like this. So, this I just finished also. See, this plague is been really not bad for me. <laughs> this is my my friend Linda. She was a student of mine in the 1970s. In fact, she was my student when Francesca was born. <laughs> that just shows you. She, she, you know, she's she's almost 70 now. I think. I'm not sure how old she is. Maybe she's almost 60. But she lives in Boston, and she has this big window. So I call this Linda's Window, Boston. <laughs> And those are her paintings. She's a terrific artist. So all those those things you can see through the window, they are there? They're there. This was done. Actually, it was started first. I painted Linda and her dog and most of the window before, but I the whole right side of the painting, I had a cop I copied her paintings from photographs. You see, and I, of course I'm I now make up colours. She doesn't have a yellow apartment, so I'm, but I like using bright color or red ceiling or blue floor. But she does have a dog and she likes to drink. And she posed in her apartment? In her apartment, yeah, but she wasn't a great mom. I, I mean, I love Linda, she's terrific. She was on her cell phone, you can see. And she was like, you know, she was probably texting somebody. For your generation is going crazy with these things. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you think, yes. <laughs> God, unbelievable. It's lucky, you know, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. So you allow people texting during the posing? Oh, I don't care. I'll, 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 then like with Linda, what I did was, as I simply put her in actually texting. I just put my paint in that. It didn't take long to paint it. Now this here, this is me, uh, which I just did, and that's, uh, I always wanted to paint a snow scene. White in the painting? Yeah, white, I wanted because I, I but you know, it's, it's, I can't believe it, look at what it's like now. But just a couple of months ago, there was a huge snowstorm, and I had this snow in the backyard, and I have to have a figure in a painting. I couldn't really call, ask somebody to go stand in the snow. So I decided I will, I'll paint myself and I'll make believe it's a window. <laughs> you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't go outside in the snow. I'm, 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 I'm old, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> you look? I stayed inside and, uh, and I, you know, I really, the, actually the sky wasn't yellow, but now that I'm doing all this with abstract color, um, uh, I I I did this. I decided because I was wearing a yellow uh, garment, uh, smock. Do I you made look a yellow sky. Why not? 
Who do, cares? Do you look in the mirror when you paint yourself? Oh yes, and I painted myself in this room. In fact, I didn't go in there. I, hmm. I had a, I had a mirror which I painted. With. I think I was in this room. I might have put the painting. It all well, doesn't matter really. So you like yellow sky? And I'll tell you the truth. I kind of like this. I feel like calling it an ugly old man with a snow thing. <laughs> but uh, I like it. I'm just going to call it the artist with a snow thing. The, the red are the color of your walls in yeah, your house? Th th it's not red. I like red. And this is part of my series. Is it okay if this stays on? Yes, yes, yes. That's good. That's good. I'll, put, I'll, I'll move this around. Well, I'll put this right over here. They're married, but the, this is the guy, his name is Victor Dobson. He's an artist. He's one of the founders, actually, of Algyra. This is his painting. This is his wife, Cicely Cottingham. And so over here, I put one of her paintings. She's an artist. These two guys are his sons from a first marriage. So I put a photograph of him in there. And the whole thing is made up. He even asked me, he says, what? Why did you make my floor red? I said, well, I wanted to make it red. <laughs> you like red color. I like red. Yeah, I like bright. Now I like bright colors. I mean, I, you know, you should change. I mean, it would be really stupid if you live as long as I do and you paint the goddamn. Such thing. a big change from this painting to this. Yeah, such that's a bright. Right. That's my wife standing in. in for, that was done around 2000. It's the same house. In, in this house, she was sitting there. And that over there, you see that painting? That was done in the night. That's my daughter and my son. They weren't even married at the time. I love that painting. You know, do you mind now if I sit down? Sure, sure. Is there a reflection of you somewhere here? Where? Because you used to put your reflection, reflection no, of your face. Oh, no, I'm not in this painting at all. No. I did a painting with my daughter, though, I don't know, it's, it's probably someplace in my studio, or oh, it might be. But that painting wasn't finished. I'm going to be working now on a finish. I'll show you, if you want to see it. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I'll show you this. Oh, look at this. This I want you to photograph. This was the poster. Okay, that the Mars Museum made, they made it, they sent me uh, two, uh, two posters and I had them framed. One my daughter has and I have the other one. This is a painting that I did for Ibsen's play, A Dollhouse. Right. And that was done in school. This is the guy who directed it. This is the young woman who played Nora. She, he played Torvald, he played Krogstad. Uh, I forgot who the other two. The other two are two maids or something that are in the play. Oh, one is Mrs. Lind and one is the maid. Yeah. Very nice. Those people were posing. They they're on the stage. What? Were those people posing for oh, you on they, the stage? They, they posed for me. Yes, I painted them from life. For how long? Oh, for, they had posed for a long time because it took me a while. This was done in the Black Theater. You know the Black Theater at the school. It's a small theater space, which I like to have all these lights and stuff on the town. It's a theater in the Mercer County College? Yeah, it was at Mercer County mm -hmm. Community College. And the guy who runs the theater uh, through me, uh, he got to like Ibsen a lot, so he put on several productions of Ibsen's plays. And I did some of my best paintings of that. Very nice. And then I'll just show you this because I think this is a good way. And this shows you how I paint now. And you paint here in the living room? Yeah, right here. where that painting is on the thing. I don't care, it's my house now. No. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'll be honest. I like that. My yeah. wife was around and she saw this mess. <laughs> yeah, so you <laughs> still have P P PTSD, have right? In this room, she would have been, uh, she wouldn't have liked that. Well, she wouldn't have yelled at me. She was a good wife. But that's my son. 
That's my son Joshua. I did a painting of me with with Francesca, so now I'm going to do one of me. I wanted to do one with my son. So that's me, and I did. That's my easel. You see, in other words, it's this easel. Right. Right. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint a landscape behind this house as soon as the leaves come on behind you and I'm going to paint myself. It's a painting. So What's the big deal? Like you're sitting outside? What? It's going to be looking like you're sitting outside, no walls again? Oh no, it will look like it. he's sitting outside, but this is going to be a canvas. This is going to be the, the walls of the room. It'll probably make it red anyway, because I'm going <laughs> to use red in the painting mm -hmm. with the green. Red. Yeah. That's my son. That's my son. <laughs> so that's just to show you how I, you know, how I was. I'll show you this if you want to do something else. You want to see any more paintings? Yes, yes, my There is no limit to what I want to see about you. <laughs> I mean, oh my God, they're coming, what will I do? I really had to straighten up a lot. I found all sorts of things. <laughs> so thank you for, for for your time, Mel, for inviting us for this interview. That's a, it's a great honor. Uh, uh, I, I think I've, I've known, you, known you for over 20 years. That's right. It's ama isn't it amazing? But you look the same. <laughs> you look the same to me, oh, <laughs> and you talk the same. Oh, and I look the same. Have the same like sense of humor. Oh, this, this me when I got married. That's me and my yeah, wife. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah, and, and that's that was right before you know I came to work at Mercer, and this is us over here when we got older, a month or so before my wife passed. What is this? Oh, this is part of the high school series. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. See this. See it. Those are students from the high school. They were also posing for you. Uh, they, yeah, they person. posed for me. Right there. Right there. And how long I, cha I changed the colors of the room. I started, you know, I'm influenced, I think, by the graffiti artists I started using all the time. <laughs> right, but I, had, I was at school where these kids posed. How long does it take for them to pose, for you to paint it? Maybe, well, two or three months to finish the painting, because I finished them first. Right, so just for, for people, to paint people, it takes one day, two days? Some, sometimes just one day. One day. I paint faster now, because I'm old, <laughs> and I don't make it. <laughs> you don't see the correlation. I, 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 I used to make drawings and stuff, I don't, I don't do the, any of that anymore, mm -hmm. I paint directly. I used to make compositional studies. I don't do that. I just and then you come back to do the background. Yeah, no, then I, 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 I don't need them anymore when I do the background. And how long that, does that take? Oh, that took a while. That took about a month. A month? Yeah. Every day you go there? Changing down. the color and everything. And, and the, iso the, the painting, the canvas stays there? Or you take it home every day? Oh, I take it home. I, I, I as much as I like the school. <laughs> I am, you know, let's face it. You are, you are a realist, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, there might be some kid who all of a sudden thinks, oh good, we can throw a dart at this thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Mel, thank you very much for, for everything, for, for oh, this. Well, th oh, can uh, I give you some ice cream or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, we were going to ask you if we can do something for you. Perhaps. Oh no, no, it's so nice that you came. I really appreciate it. Oh, this is the book we did on Lou, you know. On Lou? Yeah. I bought I bought the book. I, I got, got it, book? yes, yeah. I got it. Yeah. Lou Lou was also my hero. Yes, he was. He was one of my heroes, let me tell you. Oh, you want me to talk some more? Show me some more. You were saying something and I interrupted you. Something about photography, I can't remember. Oh photography. Oh, this is what I wanted to say. If I made photography and Lou was there, 
Lou didn't mind. I couldn't believe it. He would just smile think it was funny. You know, he'd just think, but if I had made uh, the same statement, if I made the same statement in front of Boxdale, you know, oh, Bo Boxdale would be furious at me. He would come and tell me, you've turned my students off, really? <laughs> just by making fun of photography, you know? You're just a clicker, oh God. But Lou was really, uh, you know, did, well, whatever. He was actually a great photographer. Lou was very good at photographing people, you know. Boxer was actually especially good at photographing light, I thought. But he wasn't that good when he photographed people. His compositions, I always thought, were a little off. But Lou could do the street photography unbelievably. I mean, he made wonderful compositions. You know, you know, because being a street photographer means that you you go around, you just find something in the street and you go click. I wonder if, uh, do you guys have to ask the person uh, if it's okay if you photograph them? If you do it in a public space, you don't. You can photograph anybody. Oh, yeah, that's right. If I photograph you in the inner house, then I need the permission. Yeah, but, but he, he, he did his in a, photographs in a public space, they were really un unbelievable. So you see, there are some limitations, those people... Oh, by the way, he did come here <laughs> once to photograph me. Uh -huh. Ah! Did you ever see, meet Lou? Did you ever see him? He was yeah. slightly heavy. That guy was unbelievable. He was climbing on my furniture. <laughs> he was climbing all over. He was going he click. And he had me photographed with my son. You know, my son was living at home at the time. I think, and, and he was going all over the place. He was going, I thought, bananas. Do, do you have you know, photographs? getting different ag I, I don't have the photographs. And we didn't put, uh, the, the photograph of me was not chosen for the book. So uh, and unfortunately I don't have a, a copy of it. But I thought that was really incredible. Because he, you know, but the thing was, he was so passionate what he was doing. And you were aware of it as soon as you saw him clicking. This this unbelievable passion coming out. <laughs> that's uh, well, that's my, that's a pho one of those photographs. You see the photograph of the three women over there. That's the painting with the red background. In this one here, and there's a photograph actually of my daughter's wedding when my daughter got married. You're going to be painting today? Why? Will you be painting today? No, I'm, I'm, I'm today. I, I actually just finished this. I just finished it yesterday. Finished this, okay. And then? The one, but no, no, I'm not. I was going to start my son. But I have to get my, I want to send photographs of my paintings out to museums, even though I'm having a show at the gallery, I want to have a show at a museum. So uh, um, I, I have to start organizing them because I just throw them in a pile in the other room there. Mm -hmm. So I want to, I want to, because I've done so many paintings actually during this plague. I call it the plague. So you plague know, this has been good for you. What? It's been good for you this, this yeah, time. Yeah, I, I really can't complain. I have not been, you know, but if I didn't paint, I got to tell you this, I live alone. I'm going to go bananas, I think. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I re you, what are you going to do? I, I got rid of my television. I don't watch television. I just watch tapes. I mean, what are you going to do? Do you go you, outside? Oh no, I don't like walking. I'm from New York. I'm not. A You're from New York. <laughs> you want the rest of the world walking? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I walked a lot in New York, but I never went for a walk. I try. It gets boring just to walk around the park. You know, all that crap. I don't. Know. I only built a deck outside in the back because my wife wanted a deck. That deck that's in that yeah, painting. In the painting so and the only thing I like about it the was deck good for something. was it gave me a reason to go paint outside. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing I liked about it. I never sat on the deck. I never looked at my landscape or anything. None of that really. Exit. Okay, well, thank you very much for everything. Well,
thank you for your time. You sure I can't give you some cake or something? <laughs> Ice cream cake. No, we really appreciate it. Well, it was an absolute pleasure and an honor. To oh, be here. really? So, oh, we are so grateful so and thank you so much. Yeah, but I think it's. But you got to promise now to pose for me. I'm going to pose. <laughs> <laughs> no, so when you, when you, and tell you so, all you have to do is you have to come here, and you, you I'll probably, I was thinking of sit, if I, if I got these paintings away, you would like sit on that couch together. I want the three of you together, and then I, I would, then you can go, because then the background I'll just, ma but you must bring a, 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 some sort of implication of a camera. So that, and if possible, maybe even one of your photographs you can loan it to me, because instead of that painting, I might put, end up copying your photograph and putting it behind you, and then you would be part of my artist series. Great. I have about 200 people now in the artist series. I get a whole series of them. How long will it take for us to pose in person? In person, it will take, you might have to come a couple of times because it will take me about two or three hours for each person. Mm -hmm. That's all. Is that all right? 100%, yeah. You That's know, great. you can relax. You can, you take know, the day, I'll come. You can, uh, yeah. you can talk because I, you know, I, I don't go through a lot of, uh, I'll tell you the reason why I ended up painting uh, without drawing. <laughs> because I was supposed to do, I was going to do a painting of my son. With, uh, with you know, his first wife actually, and th they lived someplace down here, near here. But my son is so unreliable that he would. I know Joshua would tell me, "Well, Dad, we're moving out tomorrow." And really, what? Because in those days, I needed the background, so I figured I, I've got to do this as fast as possible. So I just painted them directly. Not this painting, mm -hmm. but a different one that I made. I, I, I don't show those paintings anymore. Now, that's, uh, I, I, I have uh, uh, paintings of my present daughter-in-law and Joshua, which I love. And then I'm supposed to do a painting of my daughter. Well, my daughter-in-law has, uh, because she met Joshua in the tattoo shop where she worked at the time. She has tattoos all over her back. So I have this great idea for a painting. I will paint, and she was wearing, she was wearing some, uh, there was a, some sort of event that was given to honor me by the State Museum. So she was wearing actually a low cut dress so that you saw all these tattoos on her back. So I want to do a painting of her standing looking at me but then I would paint her back, and then I would make up make believe it was in a mirror. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't need. The, I I don't need a mirror. You know, if I if I I could make up the frame of the mirror, and that would be it. But so Martha, the next time they can come down here, I told her she's got. You know, they got. They usually stay at my uh, at my daughter's house. But they can only come here after Francesca gets a second shot. She's already gotten the first one, because mm -hmm. my, my daughter's strict with that, and my, my son-in-law's gotten that. How were you able to get a shot? Were you able to get a shot? Oh, you haven't gotten your shots yet. I live alone, and I do everything therapy, telehealth, so I, it's not been like a, a priority. Oh my God, so I know normal. because... Over Zoom, there's no yeah, contact. There's no yeah, contact, and yeah, I live alone right now, so... Because actually my son-in-law got it, was able to get his shots, but my son-in-law uh, had some sort of situation with his kidneys that makes him need a shot. And even my my oldest grandson has a slight case of arthritis, that so he had uh, was given the okay. But my daughter, who is fifty, is just you know she wasn't given a, you know she. She just recently did they lower the uh, lower the age level, mm -hmm. she, and, and she arranged everything for me, you know, for me getting my shot. I mean, really, I mean, she's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. What's good that you're doing well now? No, thank you.
Well, I'm still standing. And he <laughs> saw that I can move paintings it's, around. It's a pleasure to Even to though I, I do get dizzy if I get up quick. I, I can't do things precipitously, but I can walk up and down those stairs. There's no problem with that. So, uh, and I know who I am. You know, I know my name. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you are one of the best people in my life. Uh, thank I, I you. really appreciate uh, thank you so much. contact with you. Thank you for this time and for oh. all the 20 years I know you. Oh, good. All the but lessons. I, but I, I know how I want to do the treatment. I would like you seated between your two children. I have three, by the way. <laughs> oh, you have three? Yeah. Okay, then we'll bring the other two. <laughs> Will they fit? Too. That's okay. You can all sit over there. I may have to sit the fourth person on a chair or something. Because I thought that you, the thing. you like it more. It won't take long. But you'll get paid, and I pay twenty-five dollars an hour for posing. Well, well, of course, this you is know, out of the question. Uh, it would be such a such an honor that well, if you I'm paint a us. Shmana. Where's that the <laughs> pose? <laughs> this way, I don't feel bad if I tell you to sit still. If I didn't pay, I would feel worried. <laughs> We're gonna sit still. We're gonna do whatever you say, just to oh be on your painting. God. It's funny. Uh, my daughter won't take money from me. Nobody, but my son will. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. That's kind of interesting, but uh, even people who I paint, like you, know, uh, new, uh, newspaper people, you know, like the, my friend Dan Bishop, uh, he can't, if, if he or Margaret O'Reilly, they can't take money from me, or the people from the State Council of the Arts. Mm -hmm. Because they've given me grants, you know. Mm -hmm. it, would like seem, right. it would seem like it was a bribe right. or something. So they can't really. Anyway, they were posing for me during the when they were supposed to be working. I don't know how, how you <laughs> pay people. They should pay you for this. Uh, really? Well, they, they, they seem to like it a lot. They, they found it very nice that I would come there. Yeah. But. Uh, uh, I love painting people, but I have to like the people. I, ca I can't paint somebody. Is there anybody you don't like? He's well, recording. Well, <laughs> right, they're recording. Wanna, I don't want to go into so don't it. Don't say that. I don't want to go Out into loud. it. But, I've, uh, but let's just say whoever I painted, I have liked. Yeah, I love That's people. a requirement. But uh, I, if I don't like somebody really. And there are people who just annoy me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm generally very open-minded to people. You know, everybody's, a, everybody got their things, you know. Nobody's perfect. Um, yeah, but you have this I'm not some perfect guy happy either. personality. Oh. And you, it looks like you like everybody, and everybody likes you. Well, I, li I, li I liked almost everybody who, who was, almost all my students, almost all of them, I thought, oh, wonderful people. And there's so much talent, it's unbelievable. you encourage this And I, I do believe, this you can certainly print, that getting an art education is a 50-50 proposition because of this, you can, there are some things you can learn from teachers, but then there are other things which are so bad for you, they could ruin you. And I've seen that happen so often, because you automatically think when you come into a classroom that your teacher is some sort of god. That's a lot of nonsense. You know, a, te a teacher could tell you that Rembrandt isn't a good painter. And all your life, when you go look at Rembrandt's paintings, well, it's really not good. Mm -hmm. You know, because you, you take what this teacher says as gospel truth. It's unbelievable. And in art, it's dangerous, I think, because, you know, you can end up uh, give, throwing away your, your talent for what... I mean, let's say if, if I, as a realist painter, made everybody paint realistically, and I had some students who were so good at abstract painting. What would they do? They'd go to a, they, they'd end up leaving thinking, well, doing abstract painting is uh, is worthless. It's nonsense. It's just total nonsense. 
you know, it's very, uh, well, you gotta, you got to be careful in this life sometimes. People can give you bad advice, you know, it's like people in life can give you bad advice and some people can give you good advice. Like uh, an example that I like to use is that when I was getting married, I, I had friends who said, oh, you shouldn't get married, it'll ruin you as an artist, really? Did anything, it made me better. I mean, you know, because my wife stabilized my life. Or else, actually, if you're responsible for children, you know, you got you. Once you're responsible for children, you got to realize that that they have to come first. You know, even my painting can't supersede my responsibilities to my children, and they should almost feel that. You don't know that. Even though they can be big pain in the ass, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> they can get very bossy. <laughs> it's amazing how bossy your children get when you get older. But uh, mm -hmm. you know that's up to them. <laughs> okay, now have a very good uh, Sunday. Yeah. Yes, and uh, to till till next time you call me and you tell me that you're ready for. For me to sit here. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, it'll just take a while because I I can't start too I'll many. I've been waiting things. for the last twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you won't be waiting twenty years. That's wrong. In fact, the no, that's wrong. You won't be waiting. You'll see. I'll call you within a month because I'll have everything. S First of all, there are seven days in a week, oh, no. and what do I do? All I do is the only thing I have to do, wh which I can't you know, I can't control, is if I have a doctor's appointment, you know. And when you get old, you end up having a doctor for every part of your body, it seems. So, you know, then I can't, but then if I have a person come one day, then another person come another day. What's the big deal? And since I don't believe, you know, Sunday is not actually a day of rest for me. <laughs> because you're Jewish. You, you're just, Saturday is. You, it's just another day of pain, so I, who cares? That, that did make it a little difficult, it's true for my wife. Because, you know, when you're married to somebody who's crazy like that, who just, he just wants to pay, you know, you want some days off, but uh, I don't know. Thank you, man. It was great. Thank you for your time. Okay, well, thank you for coming here and doing this. Will I ever see this thing? <laughs> Sure. Do you do you, uh, do you have a, a way of seeing it? Do you have a? Oh, self, will you self make a disc that I can put it in the? I can make a disc. What yeah. kind of disc? A CD, uh, DVD. Just like a CD, or is it yeah, a yeah. DVD? Is I can it do it on DVD, no problem. Sure. Yeah, that I can put it because I I got rid of television altogether because I think it's a waste of do, time, do and I got rid of my computer because that's a somebody hacked into my computer. It's unbelievable. They hacked into a friend of mine's too. They hacked into one of my friend's phones. Do it's amazing what people can do now. Do you have a cell phone? Oh, I have a cell phone, sure. Smart smartphone? smartphone? No, not a smartphone. I don't want a smartphone. I gave up smartphones. Okay. I only have a phone that... So you don't have a computer and you don't have internet here? I have... What I have is a DVD. DVD disc, okay. That I, 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 I put tapes in. I'm watching tapes, tapes on so Macy. So if tapes, uh, this is not DVD, this is the VCR. No, not a VCR. No, he has DVDs. He's got the cases of DVDs over there. Uh, no, the tapes are DVDs. Oh, very good. So you have both. You have DVD and the VCR. And VCR, yeah. But the VCR doesn't work so well. i got to get another one. Because I have old VCRs that I want to play. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to buy another one. But, but just as long as I have both. What films do you do you watch? What? What films do you watch? I see. You. What films? Yeah. What are your favorite films? Well, now it's kind of interesting that you ask that. The films I've been watching lately, I like first of all I like Alfred Hitchcock a lot. Definitely yes. So I have I have his films. Which one? Uh, Catch well, the I have Notorious. I have Notorious. I have the man who knew too much. 
uh, I have also uh, his early films that he did in England, The Lady Vanishes, which I love, and also The 39 Steps. I have the, and then I have some others, Strangers on a Train, and Vertigo, and Vertigo, and I think I have Rear Window someplace. Rear Window is uh, yeah. James Stewart, James Stewart. Uh, but then I also and watch, Kelly. Uh, but then I've gotten to like, uh, uh, I, I watch movies that deal with art, there's a, of, of, uh, of a movie called The Woman in Gold, have you ever heard of that with Helen Mirren? And that deals with the painting by Gustav Klimt, you know, the yeah. Austrian painter, I know, whom I like Woman in Gold. Okay, yeah, and then, then I also have uh, uh, a tape on, on Vermeer called the, uh, um, uh, the Girl with the Pearl Earring. Have you ever heard? Mm -hmm. With uh, yes. Colin Firth. Oh, I love Jane Austen, by the way. So I have actually uh, tapes of uh, of her novel Pride and Prejudice, which Pride not Prejudice. tapes. I have discs. I, no, no. I know the the newer version of Pride and Prejudice. Well, I have the newer version too, but I also have the older version with Colin Firth and Jennifer Isle, which I think is the best version. Mm -hmm. And that was that. That's the best thing I've ever seen done by television. And then. Uh, I have tapes about, uh, um, I have a, a tape called The Queen, which is about uh, Elizabeth II during the time of, uh, you know, Princess Diana, when she, uh, and that's with, uh, I forgot who plays, oh, Helen Mirren, I think, plays the Queen. It's very good, it, it shows how she, and I have a play about, I have a thing about Churchill, called the, uh, uh, the Gathering Storm, which I like a lot. And, I, I watch, and then, oh, I also have a, have a tape on the King's Speech. Have you ever seen that movie? Yes. yes, yes. I think it's terrific. And uh, so I watch, I watch that, those things. Great, great. great. Okay. So and then, then there are other things that I, other things I get. And then I have, but then I have, I buy a lot of art tapes. There's a thing called Great Courses. I don't know if you, have you ever heard of that? You can, you can order them. So I have, I just, I'm, I'm in the midst of watching it. It's a series of tapes of discs on Dutch art. Dutch and they get some art historians to talk about it. It's mm -hmm. terrific. So it's a documentary. It's a, like a documentary, but it goes, it really shows a lot of paintings, so I can click on to pause. When you know, I, and so I, I don't, I don't agree with a lot of the things the art historian <laughs> says, of course. But then I can shut them up and put, <laughs> put on this pause and just look at the painting, because they, 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 they have so little understanding, I think, of the structure. But they tell you things really about the iconography. I had one on uh, the Italian Renaissance. I have oh, I have a whole slew of them. I ended up buying almost three hundred dollars worth of these uh, discs, and I I love watching them. Yes. They're really good. you know they're really good. But uh, somebody should record you talking about modern art history, and like a series of discs, for instance. Yeah, I would have liked some. Uh, somebody did come. They did at the school, actually, and I wanted to get, but then I, I retired, and I don't know who's running the tape department. So there is, a, there is such a thing, that, that somebody filmed you? Yeah, there's somebody, that, uh, somebody taped my Recorded lectures. It, okay. They taped a, a, a lot of my lectures. I have your lecture on Manet. I recorded it. Oh, Manet is my favorite yeah, painter. Yeah, and I love Manet. You so see, there's my Ma one of my Manet, my Manet books all over the place. Like, who, who are your favorites besides Manet? Manet, Manet, I like Degas very much. I also like Aikens very much. The guy with the violin? Yeah, and I like, 
I'm saying again, I, I like a lot of the early Renaissance, but I'm planning to get tapes because the only ones I don't have, they have a whole series on Michelangelo, you know, of, of tapes just on him, which I would like to get, and also a whole series on Leonardo da Vinci. Mm -hmm. well, by the way, I had art history teachers. I had art teachers when I was at, uh, to show you how lousy some teachers are, I'm sorry to use that term, but uh, uh, who told me? I remember one of my painting teachers told me, oh, Leonardo da Vinci is not a good painter. Leonardo is not a good <laughs> so painter. You survive that. Really? And then then I kept thinking afterwards, and you think your paintings are good, <laughs> you know? You know? And, you, and these monumental geniuses. I mean, if you, if, have you ever seen the Sistine Chapel? I didn't see it in person. About, about but Mary I watched the movie about well, Michelangelo. It's unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. And le that Leonardo was not a great painter. How stupid can you be? <laughs> I mean, it becomes really ridiculous. Well, my teacher, I had teachers tell me that Picasso can't paint, really? You mean you can paint, <laughs> though? I mean, I can't believe it. Their ego was so... And in class, you know, a teacher thinks a lot of teachers think they're God, so they can they can roll off lists of great painters whom they don't like. One of Leonardo da Vinci's painting, the the lady with rat, is actually in Krakow, in Poland. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's a beautiful painting. Yes, yes, yes. That's a gem. She's holding an ermine. Ermine, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, I that's call it a, rat. That's a, that's a terrific painting. I think the Nazis tried to steal that. I think they took it for a while, for yeah. five years, and then they returned it. Yeah, mm -hmm. they tried to steal everything. Okay, well. Thank you very much for everything <laughs> again. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, we'll see you soon, I guess, within a month. Okay, pause. within a month I'm going <laughs> to call you, I promise you. <laughs> okay. Take my word for it. We got you on film now. So. Yes, that's right. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mel. But thank, thank you. you so much for coming here. Thank you so much. It's real. It's worth it that I cleaned up the house. <laughs> you don't know. I, was, I got up at seven o'clock this morning. Oh wow! Oh my God! Because I figured, oh God, they're gonna next, come and this and it'll be a next, mess. Next time you don't have to clean because yeah. you like the mess and I like the mess, so yeah. well, it looks better you on have the camera. No idea. Uh, you, you, you might not. Have, you might have end up tripping over yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again. Okay, and thank you. And it's not nice seeing you nice again. Nice seeing you too, man. Good afternoon. Thank you, man. It's so good. You got a really you. nice daughter. <laughs> I do, yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to see you with all your kids. That would be great, Rachel, yes. And I love it. I love the idea. And with a camera. And with a camera, yes. I'll bring the big one. Or anything that you want, even this would be Yes, nice. I'll, I'll bring some tripods. And it's going to be looking I mean, good. I have painted a lot of photography. That's right. So, you see, so now it's time for it's me. Unbelievable. <laughs> so there goes my saying it's not an art form. Of course it's an art form. You have to really be stupid not to think so. Okay. okay. Just take care of yourself, please.
for the last 25 years. Uh, I think it was 1997 or 98. I was taking classes with Mel, painting studio classes, life drawing, life painting from the model. And I was at the same time taking uh, photo classes, photography studio classes with Lou Draper. Uh, both studios were located in FA building. Uh, it must be the, the smallest building in the, in the campus uh, at Mercer County Community College. FA stands for Fine Arts. It just have uh, has those two studios, painting studio and photography studio. So I was borrowing the the models, the, the beautiful girls from uh, that they were posing for us to to paint from from Mel and I was photographing them uh, in the photo studio uh, of Lou Draper and because they were friends they were always together the Mel was coming to a photo studio and he was looking at my prints and he was telling me or everybody he was telling me that uh, photography is not an art because uh, we photographers just have to uh, press the button the shutter and the, 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 do the click 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 and the camera takes a picture and and contrast that with the with the hours and hours of the of the painter who has to sit there in the scene at the scene and and paint and scratch the canvas for hours and hours uh, so i guess we were joking joking this way and then uh, mel's daughter francesca uh, took uh, photography classes with Lou Draper and I saw Mel being disappointed and we were making fun of Mel uh, but uh, years later my kids Christopher and Elizabeth they taken classes with Mel painting classes with Mel and I was disappointed because I thought that they would follow the photography line and Mel said that uh, we are even since then we were following Mel to his receptions to his lectures and to his art events uh, he also had those uh, live shows live uh, paintings he would be sitting on the 
in, in inside some public place and then he everybody could come and see him paint so i think i we visited him in the uh, artworks and then in a museum a LRC museum and then also i remember him painting outside of the of the, in the in the quad of mercer county community college uh, during the final critiques when when everybody puts their their work their artwork on the front pa front wall mel was uh critiquing it was commenting it and i remember one time he took the the, the piece of black paper and he s stick it uh, he he spit on it he he pasted on the on my painting at the at the the lady's neck it was a portrait not not portrait and then he says that this piece of paper changes everything, changes the balance of the painting, and now everybody will be looking at her face, where where they should look. Uh, also, I always thought that because of Mel's very uh, very wide perspective, that, that actually my mine seventeen millimeter wide angle lens on my camera was taking exactly the same pictures it was exaggerating the perspective so i was always thinking that maybe mel uh, sneaks in at night and takes pictures with my kind of lens and then copies it on his painting of course that was was that was not true that was just a joke uh, i don't know how mel does it how how he sees all those lines curving I understand that my lens can do it, but how can you do it in your in your mind and then project it over the canvas? Um, for last ten years, Mel was uh, promising us during every uh, gallery opening, wherever we uh, we met him and he talked to us, he was promising us that I have to paint paint you I have to paint you uh, even in the in the movie he says that that uh, within the month he's gonna call me he wrote me a letter that he wants to paint me with my kids and, uh, and now he doesn't go on location he says because I remember him he had a, a van and he, he would put his 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 oversized canvas and all the paintings there and and, and, and the easel I guess and he would carry this this to to the to the artist studio wherever he was painting on location it required the the, the strength i guess uh, but now he doesn't go on location so i was thinking about uh, bringing all this thing the co my computers my my screens my my tripods my cameras my desks and setting it up in his living room uh, i guess he it's it's unrealistic but this could be a, an interesting event I, I would build my environment because that's what Mel was famous for. He was famous. He is famous for painting environment portraits, which is people in their environments. And he always said that the, the, the background is as important as a, as a figure, as a person, because actually the background is telling uh, the, the viewer what is this all about. Is he a painter or is he a sculptor? So. Now Mel says that we we could come and sit there and he would paint uh, figures from the us from life, but then he would made made up the the background. Uh, that's a shame. Uh, uh, in this movie, in this film, Mel mentions over a hundred people. And and he is 86 years old, and he remembers everything. He only he do, doesn't only remember the the painters, uh, the, 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 the because he also was teaching not only painting, studio painting and light drawing, but also art history. Uh, modern art history was my fav favorite, by the way, and I recorded uh, Mel uh, talking about Manet. Uh, he was using the slide projector and I was filming the the screen but 
uh, and this film is is a very poor quality, but you, you can hear Mel Mel's comments. That's what what's important. And also, I overlay the pictures from the from the internet of the paintings that Mel shows on the screen. Uh, on on the YouTube channel, there are more films. One one of them is uh, Yellow Sky uh, from from his show in uh, Robert Wood Johnson Hospital uh, with with Leon Rainbow, I believe. So I was shocked because Yellow Sky, right? So so he, he says Mel says that he was influenced by by the graffiti artists. And first time his paintings were not realistic. I, I would say he became a, a, a surrealist. But he says the change is good. So, so, so the, the film from this event is on YouTube, and also uh, there was there was an event in El Arcia Museum. Uh, uh, Mel on Mel. Mel had an, uh, uh, many paintings hanging in this nice space. And he's walking from place to place, from painting to painting, and he's explaining who is who, who is on the painting, and and he, he tells the short stories. So so. Uh, I encourage you to look to to watch all those 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 films too as well. Uh, on the film, just to just to show you how sharp Mel is, he not only talk about painters and and he, their, their history and their paintings and his life story but he also uh, on the end i asked him a question about what movies he likes and he recommends some movies alfred hitchcock for instance which i also like but he also recommends the the the, the film that i didn't see i i just saw after he told me uh, the the woman in gold uh, about the the painting by gustav klimt uh, th this is a beautiful movie. Uh, th this is my kind of, of story that, that connects the past with the future, or with the present at least. Uh, it's about Nazis stealing this painting and then the, the, the r rightful owner uh, trying to get it back. Uh, I want to thank you Mel for, for all those years of, of our friendship and and all those events and all those meetings and all your lectures and and, and um, for your sunny and happy personality for for the for the gift that you have that you can lift people up and when i think about you i i smile you know and and, and my kids they they took classes with you uh, and we are all fascinated by you and you are the one of the best people in my life i think I want to I wanna thank you for this. And you are terrific. Thank you, Mel.